Alrighty, guys, here we go. We've got a show coming up today with Jeff Mackley. Jeff is a storm chaser. He is a, uh, a journalist who turned storm chaser, who turned volcano enthusiast, and he's actually done a lot of stuff in uh, war-torn areas with journalism. He's, uh, he's chased some of the biggest storms in the world, and he's also got a company that takes people into the belly of volcanoes, so to- um, we're talking like 30 meters from mm. the lava pools, and it's pretty incredible what he what he does he's an interesting interesting guy and there's a very lively conversation i reckon you guys will absolutely love um the show is sponsored by true pride head to www.truepride.com.au forward slash advf they're a wealth creation service if you think they can help you then book a call through our link and you'll get your joining fee waived if you do decide to go ahead which will save you 297 dollars carve are also a sponsor today guys Head to www.carve.ph forward slash ADVF. You can check out their VA services. Very, very cost effective. Very good way to grow your business. Very, very good way to get time back in your life. Get 10 hours free by heading to www.carve.ph forward slash ADVF. We are also brought to you by Adventure Fit Travel. Head to our website, guys, www.adventurefittravel.com. We've got awesome blogs coming through from our, our great blogging team. We've got uh, all of our trips listed on there. We've got all of our podcasts and our show notes. Jump on the mailing list there. Take you two seconds. You'll get our newsletter every every uh, fortnight. You'll also get all of our radio updates, any promotions, anything cool that we got going on. It's all good stuff. Make sure you head to our uh, head to our website and jump on the mailing list there there's plenty of ways that you can do that you'll see it all over the place and finally guys this is a last minute edit just to get in the show um before it goes live which is we wanted to uh give you a code if you wanted to get on any of jeff's expeditions head to ultimatevolcanoexpeditions.com and use the code radio and you'll get 10 percent off any and all of their upcoming expeditions to Vanuatu or Africa. That is www.ultimatevolcanoexpeditions.com. Here's the show. Radio guys, welcome back to Adventure Fit Radio. Today we are here with Jeff Mackley. Jeff is a storm chasing volcano explorer extraordinaire. Before we throw over to Jeff and welcome him to the show, we're going to start off as usual with Tommy's tribute. Alrighty, welcome aboard, Jeff. Uh, you're a very lucky man today, mate, because I have actually done a cover of the official Adventure Fit Radio song. So. You're, uh, you're the only person that's, the, that's got this, uh, this award, so it's good. All right, here we go. It's a long one. Don't know Jeff Mackley, you want to check him out ASAP He's a freelance photographer and he's breaking big news <laughs> He's been all around the world chasing storms and getting girls And now I wish I'd ask him, he'd ask me right now Cause Jeff is an adventurer and I'm a shit comedian The sexual <laughs> polarity, well it works so well He's been in volcanoes, thunderstorms and tsunamis, but now he's on the radio. He's the biggest test yet. Well, cause Jeff Beckley's the man. He's an incredible newsman. I'm wondering if you drive a sedan. <laughs> I want to hear about stories that'll make me doubt whether I'm living life to the full. But I've got some time There you go, mate. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Top of the water, mate. Yeah. That's uh, pretty interesting. I've never, yeah. had, never pretty strange. That. I, I basically <laughs> came on to you through the song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't know why I did. Got I was quite you, they say that about these Aussies. Yeah, um, yeah, that's right. We have a lot of trouble with sheep. Yeah, yeah, there's that's there's right. too, oh, too many of them. Yeah. I wouldn't say I had trouble with them. I just say uh, <laughs> uh, Jeff, welcome to the show. Yeah, how you going? Cool. Um, all right, so why don't you tell us... Um, 
Why don't you tell us a little bit about Jeff Mackley? Um, mm. You started as a, as a journalist, you were telling me before the show, and then we can get into all this other crazy stuff that, that, that you're doing. Yeah, look, basically, well, this madness really started when I was a small boy. Um, I had an obsession with volcanoes. Mm. Mum and Dad showed me some pictures that I um, drew when I was about five, mm-hmm. volcanoes. Mm-hmm. And at primary school, I made a paper mache volcano, um, except my one actually caught fire. <laughs> there were fire engines, there was a bit of trouble with the principal, right. <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, but as I got older, at the same primary school, that was Beckenham Primary back in Christchurch, New Zealand. Shout out to Beckenham um, Primary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the not, down not there now, the earthquake <laughs> put, paid to that. But, oh, really? But yeah, I think they were a new one. But anyway, um, All right. yeah, I had a teacher, his name was Jim Coxon. And he saw my fascination with science and volcanoes, and he would take me out of the junior class and put me in the senior class when they had a, a movie to show in the library, which mm-hmm. was an old projector, shh, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the very first f- film I ever saw there at Beckett and Primary was Maurice and Cartier Craft, the famous f- now dead French couple who mm-hmm. travelled the world filming volcanoes in the town of Jaime in Iceland being flattened by a volcano. Really? Lava, destroying everything, houses going up in flames. You wouldn't get that stuff now because the police would be cordoning you off 50 miles away. But back in the 70s, you could get that kind of Mm, thing. And those images stuck in my mind since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And all through, you know, when I left school, (laughs) believe it or not, I... Did a baking apprenticeship. So the only thing I'm actually qualified in is bread baking. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's general, awesome. general progression. Yeah, first that's right, first yeah. step, bread baking, then uh, news, then... Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. No, well, then I went into long-distance truck driving because <laughs> um, um, I've always liked trucks um, and trains. I would have actually probably become a train driver if I wasn't um, colourblind. Okay. And mm. probably still be doing that now. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so my, my other love was, of course, climbing, outdoors, storms, Dad would always take us out whenever there's a storm or a flood. He'd take us out to see the, the storm or drive to the top of the hill in the hope that a car was hit by lightning and mm, stuff yeah. like that. So mm. Very, from uh, an early age, hope. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. perfectly normal. <laughs> <You're probably dying>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so then I ended up moving to Auckland and becoming a news cameraman. And in 1997, Mount Ruapehu in the central North Island blew up. Mm. And what did I do? I raced down there. Sneaked through the police cordon. I mean, they tried to cordon off a whole mountain. Well, it's just ridiculous. I climbed up there. There was middle of winter, crampons, ice axe. <gasps> Got to the top, pulled out the camera and did an on-camera piece with the volcano erupting in the background. Well, they weren't too happy. Yeah. They, yeah. they wanted to arrest me for something. <laughs> Said that I was a, a nuisance to public safety. Well, only my own safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. a law against harming yourself. Yeah. Well, they try to these days with every yeah. damn thing. But um, Rua Pehu is Tongariro, right? Yeah, Tongariro yeah, National I, well, Park. I've been, to, I've been to Tongariro a couple of times. We didn't climb yep. Rua Pehu, but we yep. did the we did the one day circuit twice. Yep, the, with, key, the um the track, the yeah. the, the, the cross the crossing Tongariro, seven Tongariro days. Tongariro crossing. Yeah, the crossing's just one day, and the circuit's seven. Yeah, so crushed. Four, four, five, Years ago, right. I ran that in about three hours. Really? Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Need nice. to do a bit more exercise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shit, shit, shit happens. Yeah. Um, awesome part of the world. Mordor yeah. from Lord of the Rings. Is that absolutely yeah, what it was? Rural Close Pehu. to that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Is Rural Pehu um, Mount Doom? I don't actually know. Yeah. I think Rural Pehu is Mount Doom. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. I know they got those little houses built into the hill. The yeah. F- um, yeah. I'm pretty but, sure I'm pretty sure we're talking Lord of the Rings territory here. But yeah, go yeah, on. Yeah. So you were taking photos up the top whilst, so, whilst yeah, erupting. So, yeah, photo on video and it ended up on the news all over the world. Mm. It was really funny because mum and dad had driven from Christchurch all the way to Auckland to visit me and I, of course, wasn't home. Yeah. So they let themselves into the house, turned on the six o'clock news and there I was. <laughs> yeah. So they knew where I was. <laughs> um, so anyway, walking back down the mountain from that experience, it's like, holy shit. It's the biggest high you've ever had in your life. Mm. It's like visual heroin. Mm. I want that again. Yeah. Mm. Fast. Yeah. Heroin so, or the... the <laughs> well, well, yeah. Both. Both. I could be doing both heroin up there. Yeah. <laughs> Probably heroin, not a heroin. good idea. But um, I thought, how do I do this again? Yeah. So, well, there's not volcanoes blowing in New Zealand every day. Where do I go? Ah, Vanuatu. First overseas country I ever went to, Vanuatu. Lava lakes, Mount Yasur. Mm. Shot some video. Got that on the news. That paid for the trip. I kind of had this idea. I thought, if I could go to other parts of the world, take ridiculous risks, get closer than all the other camera crews, get high-quality broadcast footage instead of bullshit, you know, um, amateur Mm. um, potato cam Mm. footage, that I could possibly, um, you know, cover doing this over and over again. So 
I then went from Vanuatu to Mount Etna in, in Italy. Then I started chasing cyclones, so <laughs> starting cool. with Cyclone Vance um, in uh, Exmouth. It's the strongest cyclone to ever hit Australia. Jeez. Really? I turned up there just before the town was devastated, uh, tied myself to a tree. What? Did, a, did another on-camera piece. <laughs> Uh, and, and you know, cyclones rip trees out of yeah, the ground right yeah. now. Yeah, in 280. Not safe, mate. <laughs> and, uh, no, and we're in 280. Oh, yeah, I tied my shoelaces together and uh, wrapped them around a twig, um, a twig of um, a yeah. plate of grass. Same again. <laughs> Made the news all over the world. Yeah. By that time, I'd kind of realised that I could use the um, the power of the camera and the cameraman putting himself in front of the camera to self-advertise <laughs> because you see all these amazing videos from war zones and floods and tsunamis and all that but you never see the cameraman behind the camera it's true I decided to put the cameraman in front of the camera then he's going to be part of the story mm. yeah. and it became immediately the way of branding myself for every time I went and did something very smart I did a ridiculous piece to camera tied yeah. to a tree standing in water being knocked over by waves whatever it took to Make a visual impact. To make a visual impact and yeah. look ridiculous. Mm. <laughs> and then it started, the footage started getting used on documentaries and it just snowballed from there yeah. and, and it's never stopped. Um, so now I just go on spec to anything that might happen, try and do the most ridiculous things within the bounds <laughs> of some awesome. sort of safety um, at the event and get better pictures than everyone else and they'll always get used. The only place that's really funny is Japan because they're so honest, they're so prim and proper <laughs> that if you've sneaked through a roadblock or done something illegal really bad. to get your footage, <laughs> the media feel really bad about it and they won't use your footage because they might uh, get the right. truck. It's like, holy shit, I've got, I sneaked into this town, <laughs> the whole place is being destroyed yeah. and you don't want to hear my footage. Yeah. It's like, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how do you so actually judge the safety? Like, I mean, tying yourself to a tree, I mean, no person in their right mind would go, oh, this would be all right. Like, yeah. clearly no, you've got some adrenaline... Well, well, no, yeah. um, it's all about risk management, yeah, and yeah. it's about taking the maximum risk you think you need to take to get the best pictures, but being alive the next day to do it again. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm, uh, I might sound like a completely reckless idiot, but <laughs> I'm completely, uh, I'm safety overkill, mm. but in the right way. Not all the stupid safety that you see, or you know, especially in New Zealand and Australia now, mm. where there'll be a guy mowing the bloody lawns with a tractor and there'll be two kilometres of road cones and trucks mm, to deck yeah. that tractor. Mm. The drunk driver's still going to hit the friggin' tractor. Mm. Mm. You, know, there's, there's, you know, you've got to do five pages of safety report to climb on the roof of your van to yeah. repair a drain pipe. Yeah, I mean, this is bullshit going out of control. Mm. Mm. So, and it's not actually stopping it. It's and it's not stopping I don't it's think it's had, if they've ever studied, I don't think it's made any difference whatsoever to the mm. amount of people who die mowing the lawns on the side of the road. Yeah. Mm. I don't think any. The safety industry has become a giant business. Mm. Yeah. Just like the war on terror and the war on drugs and all these things that are supposedly for our benefit yeah, they're are not. not at all. It's just yeah. a business designed never to have an end. Yeah, 100%. And, and uh, you know, I... Complete safety overkill. We've never, you know, in all the expeditions I've taken over more than 100, we've never had anyone die or be seriously injured, kidnapped or nothing mm. because you can't reverse a fatal accident. Yeah, that's And right. anything involving a volcano, a hurricane or, or tornadoes or whatever is generally going to be fatal. You can't undo that. Yeah. So you can... It appear to be reckless, but it's not that at all. It's an absolutely calculated decision to do something or not do it based on what are you going to get out of it. If you, you need to get some really amazing pictures, get in there for a couple of minutes and do it. Mm. But if you're going to stand around there all day, something bad is going to happen. Oh, that's true, yeah. So, but I mean, like, the only thing I would say with that is, like, if they do roadblock off two kilometres, it greatly minimises the risk by them just not driving down there. Like, I guess with, like... Natural storms and stuff. There's so much unpredictability about what's going to happen. Like, do you take that into account when you tie yeah. yourself to a tree next to a hundred foot wave? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. I take everything into account, and I also need to be very careful too that I don't go and do something stupid yeah. that it ends up others having to come and rescue me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's never happened because I go in there knowing probably better than anyone what is likely to happen. And mm. take precautions that I don't need anybody to yeah. come looking for me because that's where I'm going to get flack. And and yeah. you just avoid that from happening. So which one's the most um, which one's the the most unsafe natural disaster? I guess out of like a tsunami, a volcano. Well, look, or they're all unpredictable. But you, it's all about knowing your subject and 
imagining what might happen next based on your previous experience. If you don't do that and learn from any mistakes you do make, then you're stupid. Yeah. Um, That's you, me. I know, never learn. I always go for the muffin, you, even you, though I get you, buzzed. You know, you, you, don't f- you, know, you don't film under power lines during a hurricane. Oh. That's a, a, a <laughs> tip. Right. Because, um, yeah, and you've got to think about storm surge. It might be all good out there now, but you think, okay, if you've got a Category 5 hurricane coming, the sea level is going to rise 10 metres. Well, I don't think I should be here. Yeah. And a few times I've decided to get the hell out of somewhere, and that's made the difference between living and dying. Like, so, yeah, I imagine that would be tough, like those those times where you know that if you just stuck around for like another five minutes, you'd probably get some amazing photo. Yeah, but, but you might you've get just cut had off. To, yeah, you might get, yeah. I, I have... I have what my, I call, you know, it's like your mother says, if you go with your gut feeling, if you go with your gut feeling that you shouldn't be here, mm. then get the hell out of it. Mm. And I've always gone with that gut feeling. Mm. And you also go with the gut feeling of locals. If they tell you don't stay here or don't do this, you don't ignore them because mm. mm. they, they know what they're talking about. Mm. And I've, you know, heard of countless people who've gone and done something stupid in uh, you know, opposite of what locals have said and come to some harm or be yeah. kidnapped or whatever. It's like if locals tell you not to go somewhere, you don't do it. Yeah, mm. that's right. And Makes that's, it easy. you know, so it's all about common sense. You know, I c- completely ignore the the rules and safety nana that society puts on you that you can't use this road, you can't do this, you can't climb this, stuff it. Mm. I, I should be able to decide myself whether I put myself yeah. in harm's way um, mm. you know, yeah, it's, it's with that. an interesting point. A nanny it's, state, yeah, that's yeah. Right. The nanny, the nanny state thing's pretty interesting. Like you spoke about, um, the war on drugs, and that this is like um, political. What would the word be? Little oh, nanny state. So, so you, you're talking yeah. about you're a, you're a grown adult. You should be able to. It's your body. You're living this life. <laughs> you dictate this life. I should be able to put myself. If I want to go on, if I want to go on, fucking. That's like euthanasia. Essentially, is that what you mean? Oh, it's well, like you it's should not, be able to. Look, it's totally no, it's ridiculous. Not, if if I if I want to get stoned in my own house, why should the SWAT team come in and sort that out for me? Yeah, when right. I could get uh, you know high on alcohol and, and kill myself. Yeah, you're, you're I, an could adult. Get, I could go to any bottle store and buy a fatal quantity of yeah, alcohol. You yeah. Definitely can. Yet they've got this whole hoo ha about cigarettes yeah. and alcohol. That's yeah. fine. Yet those are rate higher on a proper scientific harm scale than yeah. all the illegal drugs, yeah. Yeah. which they're so fixated on. Unless you take your, 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 unless you get wasted and go out on the street, rob someone, harm someone, drive a car, mm. have an accident, it shouldn't be anyone's friggin' business but no. your own. That's right. But we have uh, laws. We have, we have laws in place because if you want to go and get... There's, lo- there's laws in society. So if you want to go and get drunk as fuck and assault someone, or you want to go get drunk as fuck and drive your car into a fucking house or a person, mm. if you want to get drunk as fuck and you want to go do this, there's laws in place so that you get penalised for doing that. Yeah. Those same <laughs> laws should apply to... I know what you're saying. Those, those same laws... If you want to fucking <laughs> smoke marijuana or do, do you, you know, want to take illicit drugs, do you, you still have the same much laws in place. alcohol costs to Australian society in a year? I watched this doco on St. Vincent's Hospital in Sydney. One billion dollars a year from alcohol alone yeah. and all the illegal drugs put together is a t- tiny percentage of that. Yeah. I've got this fixation. Yeah, that's right. It's such of a course. funny society, isn't it? It's, it's so weird. And you don't say... Uh, you don't say Let's. Do you want to go have drink some drink some drugs? We'll get we'll get some. Drink some drugs. You don't. Well, you don't that's say exactly drugs, that's true. Right? You're right. Yeah. You say well, you alcohol. Should. It's just part of society. It's, it's like, like you a know, drug the, the, and alcohol the, issues. The police. Yeah, the, yeah. the, the police were, were, were yeah. you know way back in the 1800s. The police, you know, in Britain were first started up in an organised way to protect you from harming others and from others from harming you and and your property and so on. Where did that ever expand mm. to? We're going to come and arrest you for mm. possibly harming yourself. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. When you can do that with alcohol cigarettes and gambling all day every day and yeah, completely yeah. wreck your life mm. and yeah what are they going to do Fast make food. illegal next Fast food. the fact that what's worse smoking weed or fucking eating McDonald's Look, every the day the fact yeah. that something may cause harm it's not a reason to make it illegal yeah, otherwise right. are we going to have McDonald's illegal yeah. Uh, surfing, that's, that's dangerous. Yeah. Skiing, <laughs> sky, I mean, <laughs> it's so true, actually. It's, no, but it's, yeah, it's, it's of, you may, completely out of freaking yeah. control. They're completely uh, subjective things as to whether or not this is harmful or this is not harmful. It's like drugs <laughs> is harmful. It's like, yeah, you, so it's falling off a chair. Marijuana has never killed a person ever. Graham Hancock, get, uh, Graham Hancock, who wrote this book that I'm reading right now, yeah. Yeah. He, calls, he, he doesn't call it the war on drugs, he calls it the war on consciousness. Yes. Because it's, it's, a war, it's a war, it's a war on people. Yeah. It's a war that the free, it's a war war that the free people of the world are fighting to do do whatever they want with their own consciousness. Yeah. You know? 
you know, more people are apparently injured in their own homes falling down their stairs from any other single cause. Really? I think we should make stairs illegal. I definitely think we should as well, yeah. <laughs> stairs are horrendous. <laughs> they are dangerous. Yeah, I definitely would be sitting here right now if I had to go up a flight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's interesting. True. So um, I don't know where, where we were at. Yeah. But, um, I think we were talking about volcanoes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what about dangerous? Um, make them yeah, illegal. That's right. Stay <laughs> volcanoes. Yeah. Look, illegal. in most countries, to be honest, in most countries, doing what I do yeah. is illegal. Yeah. I mean, I'm lucky. I've got places like Vanuatu and mm. the Congo and other places that are not as well developed and haven't become as ridiculous as mm. us. Because I can tell you right now, I couldn't climb inside a lava lake mm. in Australia. New Zealand, America, well, they've got a 10-kilometre cordon around their lava lake. Mm. All you can look at is a glow. Mm. I mean, it sucks. I should be able to put myself in harm's way sure. if I want, and sure. I intend to do that. Yep, it <laughs> makes sense. What about, I just can't get over that fact of surfing. It's such a classic example. Like very dangerous, surfing out there, there sharks with, in the water. sharks and shit, I know. Nah, it's not very dangerous. Make though. it illegal. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> just make it's it illegal. A point. It's, a very, it's the same point. Zero people in the history of the world yeah. have died from an overdose of marijuana. Yeah, people same Probably people. 10 people or 5, 10 people die from shark attacks every Look, year. more we people should... are attacked by cows. Yeah. Cows are f- <laughs> All right, let's get back on track here, Jeff. Let's, let's get back on track Hippos here. Hippos are pretty soccer. awful. <laughs> Hippos are bad. Hippos are shocking, yeah. We should make them illegal. Hippos are the worst, actually. Yeah. No, they Hippos are, they are, are the worst. Bad Hippos are McDonald's, they say. Hip- yeah, that's McDonald's right. Have you had, illegal. The, have you had that? Have you had the, the McHippo? The McHippo. <laughs> 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 the um, <laughs> so, um, so, Jeff, what's the, when you're in your, your storm chasing... Days and well, you're doing it. You're still in it right right now, obviously. But what's the what are some of the craziest events that you've covered? Oh shit! Um, a hurricane in Mexico once, where a whole building fell apart around me. Jeez! And it was only a matter of moving a couple of meters, and I would have had fifty tons of concrete on top of it. <laughs> um, yeah, rental car had all these power lines all over it. I had to try and get in it without getting electrocuted and getting the car out and the mirrors got ripped off and it was blowing like 300 kilometres an hour and I was ringing my mate in America from the weather service and said, I hope this isn't going to get any worse because this whole town's falling to pieces. Fire. And there was shit flying everywhere. There were dead animals in the streets and yeah. it was a bad scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh. Can I ask, um, have you got, have you got um, family, Jeff? Um, yep, my mum um, and dad and mm-hmm. three brothers live in Christchurch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're not married? No. Okay. No. No. Okay, so... That, that was my question, you know, because a lot yeah, of people kids and a, and a wife. And, yeah, a lot yeah. of people. A lot of people would, would say I'm completely reckless. Yeah, <laughs> Pardon? not at all. A lot of people would say I'm completely reckless. Mm. Yeah, well, well, I mean, I mean, or, if you have or really brave, if you have, to be honest. If you have dependence, yeah, no, that, I have no one dependent on yeah. me but myself. Well, there you go. There, yeah. mm. well, you should be able to Look do like, you want. like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, there's, there yeah. isn't. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but so, I mean, like, irrespective if if you had a wife or kids, like, you'd, I'm assuming you'd still be the same. Like, you can't change who you are. You know. Well, but. look, one of the one of the guys that worked for me for quite a while, he, he's getting married, and um, he's been banned pretty much really? from doing this stuff. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, too dangerous. Mm. Mm. And if you've ever seen the show Married with Children, yeah, <laughs> no good. Once that happens, <laughs> your life's <laughs> goes away. You might as well cut, yeah, you, no cut it off. <laughs> cut, cut it off. And yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's interesting. Well, that, but that makes sense. I mean, you, when when me right now, like I'm happy to take risks and, yeah, and yeah. do whatever I want. But, but if you had a kid, yeah, if I had a kid, it's just it's just that extra element that you add that. You don't. I've got to be there for him. Kind of. Yeah. You know, like I'm worried about getting a dog right now because I don't yeah. want to be in charge of a dog. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but, so what about? Sounds strange. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Yeah. But, um, so okay. what, what else? What else? What are the, some of the other? Um, what are some of the other natural disasters that you've covered around the place, Jeff? So many. Probably more than a hundred. Mm. Um, wow. Been to Afghanistan. That's screwed up. Mm. Uh, as a, as to- a cover the war, cover the war. Yeah, yeah. The war. Totally, totally different, far. actually, because um, with natural disasters, you don't have uh, the volcano or the hurricane is not actually out to try and kill you. Whereas you go to these kind of places, someone is trying to kill you that you don't even know <gasps> for no damn reason, except that they think you're in America. That's right. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is always a bad thing. Yeah, you never want yeah, to be in America. You've got to learn how Sorry to say. Sorry to all of that listeners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we do love you guys. We will be seeing you soon. We do, yeah. yeah. And um, I hope we get over Donald Trump. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not allowed to mention him, but it's, uh, I can mention. it's a bad scene. Yeah. <laughs> no, Donald's no, actually listening to the show, actually. <laughs> we call him uh, Plump Trump. Bring him along to uh, Marum Volcano. Okay. Know. Yeah, he'd love it. So on that, so doing all the war photography and stuff, I can't remember what fucking book it was called, but uh, it was a book that I read through school, and it was about a uh, a war photographer that went over there and was you know um, taking tons of amazing photos, and he came back very very desensitized. I would say 
Mm. Don't think about ever think about doing that shit because you can't unsee anything that you've seen. Yeah. And you will see the worst of humanity and you will see things that you wish you never had seen, mm. but you can't erase them from your mind. You mm. can't erase unfathomable bodies and blown up people trying to drag themselves away with no legs and Ooh. shit far worse than that. Um yeah. you, far worse than that. Oh far yeah, far worse than that. You can't um you can't unsee any of those things. No. And I think I've become desensitized to it. I'm just glad to have moved on to a new phase of things now when um I don't I can keep away from seeing a people in their last moments of life um, which is what you do see a lot when you're yeah. in a disaster but at the same time you've got all these people dying around you and for some reason you're not and you yeah. kind of get this false idea that you are Superman mm. because everywhere you go you've got a, you know a thousand people might have died in the town that you were just in <laughs> and you haven't but I, I think it's a bit like skydiving if you keep doing that long enough something will, bad will happen more of averages yeah, yeah. Of so averages. You know, certainly with the volcano business, now that it's a case of, of me guiding other people to these places, my safety, you know, overkill has gone even yeah. higher because you people are relying on their lives from you 100%. Yeah. Any mistake you make with a rope at a 400 metre drop mm. is fatal. Sure. No Especially question when it drops about, into a pool of lava. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah no question about that ever. You did um, three times. That's yeah. a whole new <laughs> level of focus uh, on yeah, yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and that everyone comes back um, having had a good time, um, not, you know, in a body bag. So, you know, um, that brings a whole, you know, new focus to not just me doing my own reckless shit. It's a case of now using everything I've ever learnt mm, to keep yeah. others that are relying on me to do these things safe. Can That's I, right. um, yeah. can I, before we go, like move into more of the volcano stuff, with this, um, this covering, um, covering water on areas, do you regret doing it? Do you, would you prefer that you didn't do it? <laughs> no. In fact, I, I'd say when I first got to Afghanistan, they issued us with one of these, um, you know, embedded with the US military, one of these badges that you put on, and that allowed you to go to into any theatre of war. And um, I remember we were sitting on the runway at Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan, and we were getting ready to take off, and the pilot, I was in the cockpit filming, and the pilot said, you know, take your flak jacket off. And I said, what for? He said, he said everyone take your flak jacket off and lie them on the floor of the aircraft. I said, what the fuck for? Yeah. He said, so that's if we're hit by a surface-to-air missile, it, we've got more chance of being able to land the plane because it kind of armours the, the interior from being hit with debris. Whoa. It's like, holy shit. And we were lined up on the runway, and there's these attack helicopters and, 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 and that taking off, and you could hear all this in the headphones. And, you know, they were taking off to deliver ordnance, which was actually to go and fuck some shit up and, <laughs> and wipe out an entire wedding party somewhere. What? Um, or whatever, you know. Anything yeah. they f- thought was a threat, they were going to wipe yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And you were hearing all this on the headphones, and this was like you were immer- you were in your own Rambo movie. Yeah. And, fuck you know, God. then you, it's your turn to take off, and you take off and you do this m- incredible spiral dive as high as you spiral, you know, ascent as high as you can get. Then it put the flat jackets back on and it's like, this is this is better than this yeah. is better than a volcano. This is visual heroin times ten. Yeah, yeah. This is like, I I'm taking this extreme risk, but at the same time you feel safe because the people that are with you, the pilots, the soldiers that are guarding you and everything. You have this ridiculous idea in your head. Oh, they wouldn't be here if it was that dangerous. <laughs> so, wow. so you, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's kind of like this. You know, they, you very quickly become form of a bond with the people you are with because you know that when shit happens, yeah. you're going to rely on oh, them one hundred percent for your fans, life. Yeah. And they said to us, you know, if we get injured or killed, you are authorized to use deadly force. And I said, well. You better show us how to use all this mm. shit because we don't want to know that at the last minute. Oh, we're not allowed to do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I said, yeah. I want to know how to use this rocket launcher. Mm. Oh, <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, we can't do that. And in the end, they did They did show us. I said, I want to be able to know now what I need to do if you guys are all shot to shit. She yeah. could, um, but I, I tell you what, the New Zealand Army, they were all these young guys. They were so professional for teenagers virtually. Yeah. You know, every five minutes you had some taxi careering towards you at full bore and I'd be thinking 
open up on that guy, waste him. Yeah. Because he's a, a, a suicide bomber. But it's, not, it's just some Afghan taxi driver trying to get through a red light. And Fuck, how these guys, with their fingers on the triggers, could decide in an instant yeah. whether that was friend or, or foe, yeah. I will never know. Because every five minutes, the Americans were shooting up anything that got too yeah. close to them. Really? Uh, absolutely everywhere. Ramming anything off the road that got near them. And the New Zealanders weren't doing any of that. No. And I was thinking, how the hell are we able to tell the difference? And yeah. you've got to take your hats off to them. Oh, you just man. you you just would have um, like I'm speaking for me personally. You're just so so ignorant about what happens in war. You know. Mm. You know what's really weird? The, the mindset that you move into when you leave the safety and security mm. of you know New Zealand or Australia or whatever. Yeah. You go to a war torn place where there are no rules. Where at any moment the the, the hundred kilos of TNT that's under the road is going to turn you into red mist. Yeah. And you actually had the thought process, I wonder what it feels like to be blown up by a, a truck bomb yeah. or shot or stand on a landmine. And you never have those thoughts normally. No. Or I wonder what it's going to be like having to shoot someone if all these guys are killed. Or mm. what does it feel like to be beheaded live on the internet? You Fuck. feel... You think weird shit that yeah. you've never have to feel or think in your own safe mm. little lives. Yeah, mm. well, and um, I think the most worrying thing about that for me is the fact that I think about that shit all the time. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. like when I'm in the shower, I think, you I need think about some weird stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I need some marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> you should be arrested. Yeah, no, I should be arrested for your own safety. Well, I'm gonna go and um, I'm gonna go and smoke some weed and have a surf at the yeah, same uh, time. So uh, I'm probably nope. going down for two counts of murder. <laughs> two. Yeah. yeah. God, that's amazing, isn't it? So. So coming back from that, they do a lot of studies about mental health and stuff and going over into places where your natural anxiety level should be a lot higher because it's you're trying to keep safe and you're always analysing situations to keep you out of danger. Coming out of those war-torn areas back home, is it very, very, like, almost unreal? Yes, it is, because especially when we were in Afghanistan, the the level of danger was so ridiculous that... We had to, every move we made outside our heavily secure compound, which t- could still be hit by a, a um, RPG at any moment mm. from the outside, mm. um, every movement you made outside those secure walls was such a choreographed affair. We had to do training as, as if we were a soldier because we'd taken the place of the soldier in that particular truck. Mm. So we had to perform all their duties. We had to be looking out our window for any threats, and they'd give us a list of all the vehicles that day they thought were, um, you know, suicide bombs, yep. you know, Toyota Land Cruiser, white, whatever. And you, you, if you saw one of those vehicles, you had to yell out at the top of your voice, you know, Land Cruiser, 3 o'clock, whatever, and <laughs> they'd, they'd line up their fucking roof gun on it, and I'm thinking, I hope they don't kill everyone oh. in that vehicle just because I yelled out about yeah. it. Yeah, oh, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. So, so, even, so did you go through your head like... There's a white Toyota Land Cruiser. Do I have to oh, say anything? Be, yeah. like, I mean, Don't. obviously, it's your own safety, oh, so you kind of got to look after no, yourself. You, but you, you become drawn into that um, whole thing of, you know, that Toyota Land Cruiser could have a 50 kilos of explosives oh, in it, and it's trying to kill you. Uh, but you're also inside an armoured Humvee, which can take a fair bit, and, you you know, it, it's also annoying having to film through an inch thick um, bomb-proof oh, yeah, glass true. because you want to get better shots. And you're driving past and there's, you know, wreckage on the road and all this burning shit and bodies everywhere. I want to stop and get out and film that. No, you're not stopping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, mm. it's like we're not stopping. Um, they don't stop for anything. Yeah. Um, and and but what, what I think in some ways is worse is that overhead on the road corridors, you've got the attack helicopters flying backwards and forwards. And um, they're supposed to be there to help out in an emergency. Mm. But you're always thinking, fuck, what happens if they accidentally think, you know, you're the bad guy and open up on you with a Hellfire <laughs> missile? And that happens all the time. <sighs> well, it was anyway. But yeah. um, So do you have any close calls? Not over there. Right. No. How long were you there for? A couple of weeks. Okay. And, well, you know, what is a close call? Using the same road that had an IED on it the day before? Oh, or man. having them find one just before we go through, you could call that a close all, call. The whole three weeks were close and, call. And we had to take um, turns at being the lead vehicle in the convoy so that we shared the risk of being annihilated by an IED. Oh, and when it was our man. turn to be lead vehicle, it was a very surreal, started off with silence, and then I'd break the ice by, by saying, what are you guys thinking at the moment? It's yeah. like loud music going and laughing. It's like, do you wonder about what it's going to feel like to be blown to bits? Oh. They said, well... 
No, not really, because do you drive around Auckland wondering if you're going to be in a fatal car crash? Mm. You, well, you know I mean, it's going to happen to someone today but in Afghanistan, but you hope it isn't you. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, uh, it's and just so much more risky. You felt the strange level of calm that you were in this truck with five other guys and the same ridiculous way of thinking. These guys fucking, you know, they're only probably 18, 20. They're not going to want to put their lives in extreme yeah, danger that's right. and die. I'm just going to trust absolutely that these guys are... Just this is a safe old little four wheel drive outing and enjoy it and not worry about the IED that might be around the corner because yeah, exactly. um, they had this uh, saying they called it red mist. That's what happens. Uh, yeah, that's that, what that, you become. That's what you become red mist, and we're going to try and find any bits of you we can and send them home. And you laugh about that. Mm, that's that, but you know, insane. you know, knowing that shit's going to be be going off at six thousand meters a second, you're yep. going to be dead before your brain even knows it. Yeah, and it probably would be quite you know painless. But, oh, absolutely! The definition it, of painless. It goes so through your mind. Yep. It Come goes on. through your mind <laughs> That's um, what is. that would feel like. But it's even weirder when you get off the road and you want to climb up a side of the road to get a shot of something, and you're thinking, "What would it feel like to have your legs blown off by a landmine?" Yeah, <laughs> that would be. That would <laughs> or for someone to yell out, "You're in a minefield! Stop!" Yeah. It's oh, like, that would be bad. It's like yeah. fuck. You know, um, How do I move? and and you have to think that all the time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I, or you think, just, I wonder what sniper in the mountains around me is lining me up with a fifty cal right this minute. Yeah, mm. and you have all these weird thoughts. Wow, because <laughs> you come back just here. so much more on edge, hey? Oh, you on a constant level of, I wouldn't say fear, a constant level of um, imminent attack, imminent alertness. Yeah. Um, f- it's that self-preservation thing. You're as always a, in fight or flight. Yeah, you're ready to go. That's, that's literally what it is. Absolute high level and thinking about all things that you would never think about in normal life, and the only you only you breathe this enormous this enormous weight falls off your shoulders when you're leaving Kabul. You take off on the commercial aircraft. You know you've reached a height that's out of missile range. You then know that you're safe. Oh, and fuck. That must be a good feeling. And then to land somewhere into a first world country like Dubai. And then you know your safety level's gone up to pretty much 100% again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a f- bizarre feeling. It's just kind of this weight. Mm. People say that, but it's just this weight disappears off your shoulders that, ah, I'm safe again. Yeah. Because you earn it. But at the same time, you're thinking, fuck, I want to get back to doing that. Yeah, that's that. what I was going to yeah, say. I, was like, I, say. I want to do something. It's almost like a come down. You must have a come down, yeah. It's, it's like a come down. It's like... It's a yeah. adrenaline dump. I think like, so. But, but from like Massive a two-week... A two-week... Instead of doing like, oh, I went and bungee jumped for yeah. three minutes of my life and then I had a, <laughs> a, a two-hour adrenaline dump, yeah. you've had three weeks or whatever it was of just <laughs> adrenaline high you, the whole time. You've done that for two weeks. Yeah, and then you're exactly. Off it. It's like you've bloody been speed skating for yeah. a couple of weeks and then it's like... Oh, damn. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. Yep. I've, I've, I've emptied my brain of, of serotonin or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm, you know, I'm sure that someone would love to study people that, oh, you know, like this. For sure. But so w- what um, is, um, well, that's what, like, um, when, when, they, when people come back from war and you hear a lot of um, generals in the war, people that are kind of built for war a little bit as well, yeah, they come are. back and they say it was the, it was the time of my life. Yeah. So, like, 30% of my friends were killed. Um, I saw the most hor- horrific things that man is able to see, and it was the time of my life. Yeah. It's such a fucking strange yeah. thing to get your head around. But That's exactly what you're just saying. When I left there, I still had this, um, you know, this thing from the, you know, security cleared by a US military for, um, you know, embedding in, the, in any theatre of operations and for the next two years or something. And I had this bloody card, and it's now just sitting on my wall at home, and I thought, this here could be the ticket to something just amazing, just so I could just turn up anywhere and, mm. and film and say I'm from BBC or God knows where. Um, mm. And I decided, no, I'm not going to do that because I know it's going to end in death. Yeah. And, and there'd be nothing worse than, than bleeding out on a dusty road in, in some freaking hellhole. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's almost and, like you got the and, recipe for And hard I decided drugs. I'd seen e- enough uh, uh, carnage to, um, you know, we didn't really see that much carnage in Afghanistan, but we've seen, I've seen a lot more in other places, like, you know, civil wars and things mm. like that, the Congo and just what is screwed that, um, up places. What, um, is that, what does that say for, like, just how weird are humans? Like, that we can go into war and then say, people can come back and say, that was the, the, the time of my life. And, like, you think of, like, gladi- gladiatorial games. Yeah. 
and in, that's a spectacle. Yeah, a spectacle prob- watching people die and cheering. Well, it's, like, it's, it's what, what, it's it's probably what is simple. That? Well, it's probably also simple too. It's a, a, you've taken a huge risk and you've dodged a bullet and you've got away with it. Mm. It's just like, you know, I guess anyone who parachutes for the first time, when your chute opens and you land and you've just done this ridiculous thing, mm. jumping out of a perfectly good aircraft, and you've survived, it's like... I'm invincible. Yeah, the yeah. risk you know what I mean? it's factor. That, it's that risk reward, incredibly high level of um, satisfaction. I guess yeah. the same as taking drugs or anything like that, because you're on a level. You're on a level that no one else. No, for sure. Is. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what about and, the bloodthirsty part, though? Like you think gladiatorial. Watching the gladiatorial games, there was no. You know, you were. You, I imagine you were safe, but it was yeah. like the the spectacle of all spectacles. Just watching it. Watching people. Yeah, you know, not like being it's just, it, yeah. I think there's something innate. <laughs> Innate that we don't like. Yeah, to discuss that's that probably not that good, really. But the half. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. it's just, it's just, it's yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's like the the thing I've wondered too is over the last few years. I mean, I've for the last thirty years seen incredible carnage that you couldn't even imagine. Mm. But now anybody can go on lively can see that. Yeah, that's right. And they can see people being killed and beheaded, and mm. things that you sh- can't unsee and that you shouldn't see. Mm. You know what I mean? I think the internet has changed, has desensitised the entire human race in a way that yeah. we haven't really quite understood. I know. Because yeah. you can see things. There, there are even things online that I won't look at anymore. I yeah. don't need to see someone's yeah. head being cut off. Yeah, it's um, interesting. I still that, feel that, there's you, like you a know wall what I mean? there, though. You know, like you, what what you've experienced is true in life. This actually happened for someone yeah, who's yeah. like a young kid growing up, where like he or she is exposed to anything on the internet. It's like, oh, cool, like. There's some dude getting it's beheaded. Like watching a movie. It's like watching a TV. movie because it's just they can't fathom that's yeah, actually but it's real. Someone you know? who's not um, not all quite there, or who's mm. who's been on meth for two weeks or whatever, mm. they might cross the line between um, between reality and uh, yeah. live leak. Yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> um, so it's, I think that, that I don't know. It's necessarily a good thing. Oh, definitely not. No. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's funny because you think the internet. Well, for me and Tommy, like. Well, I, I feel like the internet's been around forever. Yeah. But it's been around since fucking 99 20 years, or something. Or whatever. You know, yeah. like, Shit, so- no. When I first started storm chasing, the internet was so primitive yeah. that I had all these ridic- I was probably the first person with mobile data. I had these ridiculous things rigged up <laughs> where I'd have a, a cell phone the size of a brick yeah. connected to a modem that I dialed manually the number for the dial up internet um, <laughs> back in New Zealand and actually managed to be able to download weather charts. One kilobyte. In, in yeah. 1997. And I could actually successfully do that. Yeah. And and nobody could do that. No. Now you could do it. My mother can do it on her cell phone, yeah. on her smartphone. Yeah. The things that the world has just become like. Well, you can just ask Siri, but, ask Siri to do it for you. Yeah, that's right. It, hey. it's, yeah, it's incredible. Um, but back, back in the 90s, that was... Um, you know, I was always pushing the envelope of, you know, trying to digitise video and send it out and be mm. quick because I realised the days of, you know, flying your video to the newsroom in a helicopter or whatever way you could was ridiculous. There had to be an electronic way of doing it. Yep. So mm. I kind of, you know, in the early days of that, I could turn up in Mexico and film a hurricane, yep. transmit the footage to CNN, and they'd have it in their office before their camera crew who was there with a million dollars worth of satellite uplink which they couldn't use because it was blowing 100 miles mm. you know I had a sat phone in the hotel window taped to the window yeah yeah and you know, I just sort of ex- tried to excel in doing ridiculous things that were experimental back then but now commonplace to try and um, mm. beat everyone else it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's <laughs> almost like scary to think now as well though your 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 job I mean it's, it's good to see like a, a human in in these you know, incredibly unsafe areas and things like that. But how how easy is it going to be now for uh, for drones just to fly into even riskier areas and oh. just take the footage there? You know, drones have just taken things to a new level, haven't they? Haven't mm. they? And this, oh. I mean, you can buy them now, at JB Hi-Fi. And oh, look, but you know what? All that's going to crash and ruin soon because all it's going to take is someone connect to connect a friggin' bomb to one and fly it through the window of the Prime Minister's office. Yeah, see you and later. drones are going to be fucking grounded. See you later. I mean, yeah. really, I'm surprised someone hasn't done that already, but the drones mm. are an amazing tool, but I think someone's going to do something stupid or, you know, fly into the path of a, an A380 landing at the airport. Yeah. And, you know, when that happens, and it will, mm. something stupid-ass will happen. Mm. Um, restrictions. Restrictions are going to, I know, think... Um, we'll find them. They've restricted... 
a lot there of things. Have. Yeah, yeah. Think, no, like, yeah. Well, you think of like, <laughs> yeah. you think of like old mate down the road, fucking yeah. drinking, drinking twenty beers on a Saturday Arvo. Yeah. Check out my new drone I got. Like, you got to oh, imagine exactly. you've got this heavy weighted object in the air above re- regular, yeah, everyday people. people. Shit, yeah, you know that's like. Drones are going to get that popular that sooner or later they're just going to start falling from the sky because people are fucking have them up. Have you seen the video online yeah. of someone in America who attached a pistol to his one? Oh, you're kidding. And remote controlled it. I mean, the FBI were not happy. Straight away, But yeah. I mean, it was clever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's clever. Well, drones, are killing it. drones are killing people left, right and centre over in... Um, well, the, the Americans, in the uh, yeah, that's know, right. They, they, they specialise yeah. in using drones to kill people, and they were yeah, doing yeah. that ages ago. Sure, yeah, they've been doing. Well, so why shouldn't? Why should we not be allowed it? Yeah, have exactly. Them? Unless we, I mean, yeah. I'm not huge on killing someone. It's, it's <laughs> no. I've got mine right now, but <laughs> but it's the same with anything else. Something may cause harm, so let's stop it. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, <laughs> well, how, how about that drone that uh, whipped off a bunny snag? Do you guys hear about that yeah, one? Yeah, that was pretty classic. No. <laughs> it's just some some dude just because I, I don't know how far drones can go. Can they go like a K or something? Oh or? shit, no! A mate of mine's got one. We, we were filming trains up in the mountains in the South Island. We were waiting and waiting for this train. So I'll put the drone up. Yeah. Look for the train. So he flies about five k- kilometres oh. away, way miles up. Two or three valleys away, oh, and oh yeah, there's a the train, and I'll just follow it all the way back. That's so, ridiculous. So it's got a little shit. video, like a it's little got a screen video on the screen, and the Q fly by the camera, and um, Fuck, man, that's crazy. You know, just amazing. Yeah, yeah amazing absolutely. footage. Really great for a, um, just um, amazing um, footage. footage. So good, it looks like it's not even real. Nah, yeah, exactly. Well, I, I see I that Planet it. Earth too, because yeah. a lot of that's been shot with drones. Droning. And it's like as up close and personal. I haven't seen it, but it's supposed to be. It's just Insane. unbelievable. The best ever. David Attenborough. David Attenborough. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. A, a level of stabilised, amazing imagery that you wouldn't even get with a helicopter and a steady mm. cam. Mm. You know, a several million dollar rig. Yeah, mm. exactly right. Can't get what they can get. Yeah, yeah. Alrighty, guys. Just a quick word uh, from myself about our sponsors to break the show up a little bit. Today, guys, we are sponsored by True Pride, which is a wealth creation surface that allows you to pretty much take back control of your life if you are in some sort of financial debt. So moving forward, getting ahead. I worked with uh, with Craig and the team and uh, it, was, it, it honestly worked really well. It worked really well. I'm, uh, I'm much better about my budget now. I, uh, I use a software program called MoneySoft, um, which allows me to, to look into um, constant updates from my, from, my, from my spending and it also just gives me a clear indication of what I'm spending a lot of money on uh, day to day. Really, really good stuff there, guys. It allows you to set up goals, um, has your budget clearly outlined, and it's um, it's some fantastic stuff. I reckon I'm up to about 170 to 180 um, saving about a week now, um, just from just some habits that I've taken out, um, which have been identified through the through the um, through True Pride and, and the software program. So if you guys want to get ahead, like I did. Head to www.truepride.com forward slash ADVF to get the initial fee of $297 completely waived when you book a call via that website. Guys, we are also sponsored to you. Fuck. We are also sponsored by Carve. So Carve is a virtual assistant company over in the Philippines, guys, that helps on uh, uh, with helps with small businesses, helps with... Uh, with small projects, um, basically allows you to to focus on the bigger picture, the bigger things you have to do um, on your assignments or, or on your work and that sort of stuff. So uh, Bill and I use it for the radio. Bill also uses it for travel. Um, I love dealing with the guys over there. I can um, clearly send all of the, the audio to them all and they can edit it and we can deal some stuff we have to, all the nitty gritty stuff. And then Bill and I can focus on um, some stuff that we want to get rolling in the next six months that's going to be awesome for you guys so head to www.carve.ph forward slash advf and you will get 10 free hours with carve here's the show jeff Mm. let's do some good the bad and the science you ready yeah all righty so uh three current affair issues something good something not so good and then something sciencey as well because we're both yeah. pseudoscientists scientists okay, Bill and so I, I, I uh, I'm necessarily. more of a pro-scientist but Tommy's yeah. more of a pseudoscientist I may not necessarily yeah. know uh, the answer he's a pro-scientist I'm a, I'm a slow scientist <laughs> but so, if yeah. I don't know the answer I'll try and bullshit yeah, my way that's right. no these are, they're just hypotheticals <laughs> hey uh the good angry bodybuilder slaps judge when he comes in second place maybe there is such a thing as being too pumped up when Greek bodybuilder, here we go, this will test me, Giannis Magos, came in second at a recent competition, he was frustrated. So frustrated that he apparently smacked down one of the judges. And when it says apparently, it's weird because the, 
the news story had the footage oh, yeah, there's a to link to it, and it's it's not apparently. Like he he clearly got him. Yeah. Uh, how, he only came second overall, third place uh, in recent competitions according to Evolution of Bodybuilding. Now, my question to you guys was. Have you ever come second in something or something where you should have felt like you came in first? And uh, if so, how did you how did you react? No, not like that. But not I mean, like that slapping, was just slapping a bodybuilder, Josh. That's, just raw, <laughs> that's steroid rage. Yeah, there's probably a bit of steroid rage yeah, in that. Steroid yeah, steroid rage. <laughs> 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 Make it illegal. Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> we should attach some steroids to some drones and just see, yeah. just flying around injecting people. Yeah, big, we can get them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get some guys big. That's a fucking plate. Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, yeah, I don't really have one there, Tommy. So no, I came in second or I uh, got angry. Mm, what about, nah. when, well, how would you feel when you, when you, when you, at your recent nationals comp? Well, at my recent nationals comp, I didn't come second. I, came, I didn't even look at the scoreboard. I went that badly. I what, came, was the, uh, what, was the, what was this competition? Uh, it was a weightlifting competition, what, like yeah, Olympic yeah. weightlifting. Yeah. And it was the national championships in Brisbane. And I think there was like 15 in the field. And I didn't come last. I mm. probably came 12th. I, I didn't check the scoreboard. Yeah, right. I literally didn't. Because I wasn't, I wasn't competing for placing. I was competing to better myself. Because I knew I was never going to be top five. Unless sure. like everyone else. Unless it was Stephen Bradbury. Everyone else broke their legs. Yeah, that's right. You so, didn't get angry though? And no, not really. Rage. I enjoyed, enjoyed the experience. Yeah. I, um, he was pissed before the last bell. I, <laughs> I, I had mates that won the Nationals. You know what? I was, I was upset because it was... I wasn't going for placings in oh, oh, I'm eight, eight best in Australia or something. Like my, my, <laughs> yeah. my best day, I probably could have said that. Yeah. I was just going to lift well, lift better than yeah. I than I, you know, and I did it, and I was disappointed, but <laughs> whatever. And yeah. um, how do you see the place of performance enhancing drugs in the sporting world? Well, uh, we just, we just had a really good conversation. So, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's a bloody good thing yeah, because yeah. humans aren't going to improve much more on their, you know, well, look, their well, limits. Well, people like, were, people were some were probably help. saying that fifty years ago, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would say, but I think technology. You know. I think there's put it this way. I don't. I don't think you'll ever stop drugs in sport ruining it. The the fair the playing field. So the only way I think we're talking to Richie Patterson before mm. Richie the weightlifter from New Zealand, um, and Richie said his his stance on it is he wants to have just really hard line. You get done once, you're out. See you later. You're never competing again. Yeah, which is all right. But then uh, then the other way you could do it is powerlifting, bodybuilding. There's a few sports out there that I have that have tested and non-tested ranks. Everyone that's in the non-tested ranks is on juice, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. And there's that, probably still cheats in the tested that, that's part. That's what you know? I heard. If you're not, you're not going to be at oh, a competitive you level. You just not, not, not at weightlifting. No, not, not, at, not at anything, really. Like, you're probably right. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I think um, it's just human nature to try and cheat and it's always going to be around. To win I don't more. Know how, to win more. I don't know how you... And to ev- evade the testing procedure. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Mm. Um, the bad... This town is threatening to punish drunk drivers with Nickelback. What's worse than a fine, a criminal charge, and a driving suspension? Sorting out those legal troubles to the tune of Nickelback. A, ca- a Canadian police department is getting creative when it comes to preventing drunk driving. The Kensington Police Service says that it will force offenders to listen to everyone's favourite Canadian band, Nickelback, <laughs> should they find themselves in the back of a squad car this holiday season. <laughs> Authorities issued the warning for those dumb enough to feel they can drink and drive to a uh, Facebook post on Saturday. Uh, now, my question to you guys is, do you guys have a band that you absolutely hate, if it is Nickelback, and which one would you hate the most? They should to? make people listen to Justin Bieber. <laughs> well, this is, gonna, this is probably <laughs> going to go against popular people, man. Fair few uh, Bieber-leavers. Be, 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 be 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 <laughs> There's a fair few Biebers out there. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, not PG officially. We've got to put explicit on this one now. Um, I'm a I'm massive even, believer. Yeah. Oh, I was talking about the video. <laughs> I'm a believer. I'm a massive believer. It's embarrassing, but uh, actually, yeah. no, it's not. I'm, I'm proud to say I'm a believer. <laughs> but yeah, no, Nickelback's horrendous. Nickelback is Nickelback's horrendous. probably the number one. Yeah. You can't get much worse than Nickelback for razor blades in your ears. Oh, God. It's just uh, like, I'll give it to him. I got a couple of good tunes, but most of them's pretty average. <laughs> hey, uh, the science. So, pooping. In a spacesuit. <laughs> so, the International Space Station's Orbitary Laboratory is light years beyond Apollo 10's problematic poop baggy sticky tape situation. Uh, but when NASA sends astronauts to the solar system destinations, they could mean being so stuck in a spacesuit. Yeah, I've completely lost where I am. Uh, anyway, anyway. Poop my question to you guys <laughs> pooping in a spacesuit. <laughs> Turns out they've got this amazing sort of uh, question out there to someone who can figure out how to best. Go to dump, go take a shit up in space because Bench. it takes them so long to get into a spacesuit when they're up there. So my question to you guys would be, what's the weirdest place have you ever had to take a dump? 
Oh, that's a bad one. Really good, like, let's have a think, you know. Mm. Not a bad one. Mm. I um I had a shit at a house party once in the front lawn. Oh, we've all done that, haven't we? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Oh, sorry, my- sorry. I'll, I'll have to up my game. Yeah, time. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> was it a, was it the same one? <laughs> no, go, go, uh, go on, go on. Yeah. No, I um I I uh, I had to run outside of a house party <laughs> and uh, run to the front yard. And uh, pulled my pants down, shat, and took my socks off and wiped it with my socks. Oh, that's gross. Uh, I did that yeah. once. That's not good, is it? Uh, <laughs> I can't think of any anywhere weirder that I would have had. Yeah, a, that's had not a too gym. bad. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, that was good. That was uh, that was a good about the science. Jeff, have you got anywhere that you've? Um... Oh, yeah, no, it was a bad news. It was halfway down the volcano in Vanuatu. Oh yeah, that's You're right. You're halfway down a 400 meter friggin' cliff. You got a harness on, all your shit, <laughs> and you've got diarrhea. Oh. And this this is not funny. <laughs> no, no. I had to stop on a ledge. To take like. my harness halfway off and yep. I'm still connected to a rope all over the fucking place <laughs> wiping my hand it's not funny but then there were just like, poos everywhere <laughs> so it you didn't go just straight down the volcano there were poos everywhere yeah yeah, oh, yeah. it's a bad scene I told you about the time Roisy um, Roisy came Roisy went to have a have a uh, pee in the bushes yeah and came back naked um, with a towel around him ah oh, from memory after he my mate um, I feel like I know so much about this guy that I've never even met my mate my mate, uh, my mate Roy Boy he um he, we were having, uh, we're at, it was New Year's Eve, and we're having, um, we're having uh, beers or whatever near our car at Falls Festival, like just a big music festival. Mm. And um, Rosie goes, "Oh, I gotta have, I gotta have a piss. I'll be back in a second. And he <laughs> runs off, goes to the bushes, which was just like probably, we we're probably like ten cars away. Goes to the bushes, starts starts um, having a pee, and then he's like, "Oh no, I need to have a shit." <laughs> so he goes a little bit deeper in the bushes, pulls his pants down, has a shit. Then he realised he didn't have anything to um, wipe his ass with, so he took off <laughs> he took off his um, his shirt first, wiped his ass with his shirt, and then realised that he needed to wipe more. So he took off his pants, oh, no. wiped his ass with his pants. He had no underwear on, and then he was like in the bushes. Stark naked <laughs> and he's like oh fuck what do I do now yeah. and then but he didn't know where the car was so he had to put his hands over his over his package he's walking around like Doc yeah. look for me Doc <laughs> trying to find the car and she goes oh she goes oh my god do you need any help and Rosie, Rosie said she goes what happened what happened he wouldn't tell her nah, he, he said nah. I don't remember I nah. don't remember so she was real worried so she puts a towel over him hides his, hides his shame and walks him back look, yelling out Doc Doc and then um she goes, your friend, he's, your friend, he's, do you know this guy? And Rosie lifts his head from underneath the towel. I'm like, yeah, yeah I know him. Yeah, yeah. Bring him over here. I said, what so the fuck what, have you done, mate? What caused all this? Um, well, he just needed a, he just needed Alcohol. a Alcohol. Sh- yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. Shark surfing. <laughs> shark surfing. <laughs> <Yeah>. Classic. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, that's um, cool. So, Rosie, um, Rosie, doesn't listen to the show all that much, so yeah. I'll probably get away with that. Yeah, we, we, we pretty much bag this bloke every episode. <laughs> <laughs> Poor bastard. Nah, he's, a, he's a, one of the funniest men on the planet. But, Jeff, so, yeah, so, uh, what, what, um, when did you start to take the volcano thing to the next level? So, you went, you were in um, Rapa, Rapa Nui? R- Rural Pahu. Rural Pahu. Yeah. Rural Pahu yeah. was Rapa your Nui. first. Rapa Nui, Nick Nick Rapa Nui, Rapa Nui. It's a yeah. And try then what and say that when you're stoned. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and say it now. And then, um, <laughs> and then w- what happened after that? So when did you start um, like taking people and and what was next for mm. you with the volcano? Well, it, the whole volcano thing. thing evolved to taking part in a lot of documentaries and being the cameraman for those documentaries and that and. Then it moved on to we developed quite a niche in Vanuatu with the the, the Amram Island and I'd I'd spent since nineteen ninety seven trying to get to the bottom of this huge hole in the ground with a lava lake because I had this fixation on I wanted to put a human in scale with a massive lava lake and when a heat, in a heat proof suit and I wanted to see what that looked like that mm. has been my goal for twenty years yeah no one had ever done that before and, and that's been like a, a ridiculously expensive addiction too because that's probably cost me a million bucks mm. and I've failed attempts to get in there until finally we got the, everything right the right crew the right weather the right everything we got to the bottom about six years ago got the amazing images and it just went ballistic mm. um, was on the, TV all over the world. Then we had countless film crews wanting to go up there and do stories about us or to get their own footage of the lava. So we then sort of become the sort of guiding guiding party to taking film crews up there. Um, and then it's sort of, you know, it's, it's a pretty expensive proposition mounting an expedition to the bottom of the lava lake. It's a bit like climbing Everest in reverse. Yep. Mm. You, you know, you're looking at 
you know, at least 50,000 US dollars to go and mount a proper expedition. <sighs> and that that's beyond all the you know all but the the you know the most well healed film crews and then then we then we started creating sort of regular trips where I try and gather together enough potential clients who didn't have as much money mm. to share and go up there mm. and share the cost and then I, then I started tacking a few individuals who wanted to go up there on the end of a film crew visit then I thought shit if I could get 10 people together to come at the same time I don't need to wait to once a year when I can get enough film crews because if you charge them each a modest amount and you get enough money together to pay for the overall cost, you could actually do this all the time uh. as and, and run tours for individuals yeah. because there are hordes of people who want to do that bucket list thing. And, you know, uh, you know, I can't stress enough that I think that standing 30 metres away from a giant lake of boiling lava, there is nothing in life that's legal mm. that's that you're going to feel that good mm. and that amazing you'll come away from it saying that's the most amazing thing I've ever done in your life doesn't matter whether you're an astronaut or you're in the special forces or you're uh, uh, the whatever you're going to say that yeah yeah and wow. and that that's what we want to try and do now is promote the hell out of this and um, you know so why well, why volcanoes uh, over every other natural a disaster a volcano a volcano is like looking to the heartbeat of the planet we think we live on this calm, pristine, uh, unchangeable landscape, but we're not. Underneath all of us is yeah. a seething, giant mm. yeah. fucking quantity of molten lava. We live on and the apple peel. Yeah, we, we're mm. living on the apple peel, mm. and we, we're living on That's a dynamic, analogy. ever-changing, Thanks, mate. dangerous yeah. planet. And what's going on down there doesn't give a shit about what we're doing nah. up here. If it wants to come up, in the street it's going to do that yeah yeah and the US Army ain't going to be able to stop it no no one's going to be able to stop it and that's what I love about nature it's an unstoppable force yeah if it wants to flatten your city with a hurricane the US Marines are not going to be able to stop it no the atomic bomb's not going to stop it nothing is going to stop it that's what I love about nature yep it doesn't have a malicious intent like humans everything that happens in nature is to bring back balance in one way or another it wants. and yeah. it does what it wants and it doesn't care less what you're doing up here yeah yeah and, yeah. and I think that's it's cool that's it's what I like about it Yellowstone uh, National Park's the funny one you yeah, know super volcano the super it's, volcano it's a bad scene. Whenever, whenever that decides to Just spurt go. a little bit of lava oh, absolutely. all of uh, North America and probably Look, fucking half you, of the rest you know, of the world is every, totally fucked cooked. every you know ready now too few hundred it's years or so again. we have yep. super volcanoes go right. up and and we haven't been we haven't had modern society in the way we've got now since the last <gasps> one happened so we could be completely just about turned into an ice age you know if we thought you know Iceland was bad shutting down half the world's aviation one tiny little volcano yeah imagine if you get you know a Krakatoa sized volcano you're going to have a shit fest on a scale that you just can't even contemplate. Yeah. What would we do? Uh, well, we we you know we could have widespread crop failures. We could have um, you know you know it'll spew the dust you, into the air you, that goes yeah, the, that the, dust, the volcanic that, ash that, that dust, screws it up. Yeah, yeah. That, kill, that kills all the sunlight from coming yeah, in and absolutely. kills everything underneath you, you, it. You drop you drop the bloody uh, temperatures enough. Uh, you, you know things are going to get bad. You stuff the electrical grid. You have, you know, your power well, pylons all falling down. Yeah, it's going to be a bad scene. You, you know, you need to be installing a generator at your house and but, but like thinking even, of the apocalypse. Oh man, that's because interesting. It's coming. Because mm. like <laughs> even even all of that volcanic ash, if that on a big scale, a like you said, blocked all the sunlight, but blocked all of like the 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 Wi-Fi from the satellites going yeah. up and down. Internet's oh, gone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. satellites. You know, satellites are something world. that sits yeah. up there that we don't think about, but satellites are what we. Rel- Rely on those clumsy little things up there mm. for our e- every existence now. The, you know, the, the, you don't think the weather service can tell you there's a thunderstorm coming mm. to, and it's going to flatten this place in an hour without all that stuff. We we rely on technology. Oh, the, food the, getting into the cities. The, the human race has, in a hundred years, come from the Stone Age yep. or the Steam Age to the to, to the age where we have the ability to destroy ourselves I know. <laughs> and not yet the intelligence to collectively stop it. Yeah, that's right. Um, and you know, we're still that's still nothing compared to Mother Nature can do one big shit fest. And, and you're screwed. Yeah. There definitely wouldn't be any adventure radio, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, we, the, we might. We the, manage. It, the the yeah. Yellowstone National Park, I don't know the exact stats, but it's something like it got, it, it blows every 300,000 years. Yeah. And, yeah. The, and, the, and when, when Yellowstone mm. National, uh, uh, when Yellowstone um, supervolcano erupts, it will decimate 
half of the planet. You and, imagine... And it, and it last erupted 350,000 years ago. <laughs> it's, you, it's past, you, past you want to try and drive a car on three inches of ash. Yeah. It's, it, unless you've got an enormous big army truck, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. Just a couple of inches of ash on an entire major city could would completely stand still the whole city, cars, trains, buses, everything. Yeah. Mm. We don't realise that. And that's no. not much ash. No, no, not yeah. at all. And that, you know, we could get six feet of ash from oh, a yeah. you know. Man. Ash is the, the main thing. Ash, and it, yeah. You know, you imagine if the whole Earth's atmosphere is full of ash screwed. and you've got every plane in the world grounded, yep. we're screwed. Yeah. yeah. We, we're going back to steamships. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. The scary thing I reckon is, is um, for any sort of natural disaster is, or when the internet goes down, is... No one's hunter gatherers. No, nah. you know pe- they they say that there's like two or three days of food basically in a city. Yeah, you know then then the food stops and you're on rations and then like within two weeks yeah. what are you fucking doing? You go and fish out in the bay. No, no, like, people will turn know? on themselves. There'll be yeah, tons the- of cannibalism. There'll be. Oh, oh, it's gonna be. It'll be like a zombie apocalypse. Oh, actually, it will be. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I say welcome. <laughs> I say welcome the zombie apocalypse. I've got a huge big ten ton truck and I've got bloody water supplies, food, yeah. generators. I'm kind of like you doomsday prepper. I'm kind of like. A mobile doomsday prepper <laughs> because I, I know better than anyone that that could easily happen and we just yeah. live in our little foo-foo existence thinking yeah. that we're going to be able to go down to Starbucks and yeah. get our coffee that may all be over in a heartbeat it, it amazes me you know just like the big a big earthquake a big earthquake oh. is, uh, yeah absolutely yep. as we've got we're spending so much money on war annihilating our own species yeah, I know. But you know the one thing that's going to annihilate our species better than anything else, and that's one big friggin' astro- astro- yeah. astro- asteroid landing in the sea. Oh god! And no, uh, don't think that that hasn't happened before because it has happened routinely yeah, over yeah, ma- yeah. over millennia. Yeah, yeah. And we don't think that that that's, should be what we should be spending our money on no. instead of wiping out the whole of fucking Syria yeah. with with just horrendous fucking death and misery. We spend like three uh, percent um, of the NASA budget on. Um, this is this is bro science, but yeah. it's something like three percent of the NASA budget on out out of um, of um, large objects in mm. our orbit, and we spend fucking like one percent of the war budget on NASA. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. It's like, it should and that's there the need to be a war budget. I mean, this is just bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a, it's a trillion dollar <laughs> saving and, to kill people. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. but, um, Look at that pleb over there, the postman. Like, no idea that an asteroid's going to come and absolutely annihilate us. <laughs> no, you know, absolutely. Like, well, I'm, you know, you know, you know <laughs> she's got no oh, idea. Shit. She's probably a nice lady. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the one thing that that I always it always fascinates me what comes without warning and will change your life instantly and from Ever, forever it's a big earthquake oh yeah whatever plans you've got you, you know you're on your way to on your tr- holiday you're whatever you're driving your train whatever that big earthquake comes and you're fucked yep. yeah, and everything that, that you've ever known is fucked in one minute yeah and th- that's what amazes me we just have no clue of the indescribable power that nature can unleash on us yeah. at any moment and I know having had my hometown completely wrecked by an earthquake yeah. and a second one in another area that I've spent a lot of time in when I was younger now it looks like Armageddon. Mm, you know, yeah. the train tracks are on the beach. Mm, mm. And this could happen at a moment's notice. Mm. And we don't know. We we live life like this is going to be like this for yep. all the time. I guess I go around with this theory that I'm just living for the moment because mm. I know that that moment, can, you know, some really bad shit can happen yeah. without warning and we can do nothing about it. I've got to live more like that. I mm. suck. I think, um, <laughs> yeah. I think um, my... My, I think that's why volcanoes and 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 all these things are Natural so disasters. are so amazing to go and behold. My two favorite things I've ever done in my life by a country mile, and I've done quite a lot of pretty cool stuff. I've been lucky enough to. Is number two was go to Iguazu Falls, the the biggest waterfall uh, I, in the world, most powerful. I want to do that in flood. Fucking wait, what's that? I want to do that when it's in flood, when it's in flood with, yeah. a, with a drone. Seriously, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, incredible. Sick. it's incredible. Spent two days there, yeah. and I sat there. This was with Roisy, the oh, guy yeah. who shed his pants. Um, <laughs> so, so, um, um, so I went to. Um, we did the. There's a Brazilian side where you look down from mm, uh, down from yeah. the top, and then there's Argentinian, Argentinian side where Argentina. you look up from the bottom. It mm. might be the other way around. I might have them, but that's basically there's two yeah, sides on the border. So we did mm. the. Um, on the second day, we did the side where you go down and you're looking up on it. And we walked out onto this bridge and you get probably 15, 20 meters from the biggest fucking body of water you've ever seen in your life, rushing as fast as you can possibly imagine. It sounds like a jumbo jet taking mm. off. Like, we're standing uh, like this. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And we're, and we're 
this is this is awesome. Yeah, yeah. How good is that? Like you can't hear each other. Yeah. And I said to my mate Rosie, I said, "This is the greatest thing I've ever done." This yeah. Is, there was the end of a South America six month trip. So this is the best thing we've done on this trip. It wasn't the greatest thing I've ever done because the greatest thing I've ever done was Mount Yasur in Vanuatu. Uh, by far and a fucking uh, way. Fuck. Mm. You you want to come to Ambram. It's you'll, crazy. You'll exceed that by a hundred times. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So the, what happens at Mount Yasur is you stand on the rim of the of the crater. And every five minutes, it erupts, and it erupts with fucking twenty minivan-sized bits of lava, a hundred feet above your head. Like you stand there, and it and it. That's you, a yawn. Yeah. To, yeah. It, well, you could probably yeah. tell me tell me better more the stats of Mount Yasuo, but the ground shakes, and you're like, yeah, oh, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. and yeah. it's not. I can't. Like you say, it's a yawn for for you, Jeff. But me yeah. myself as the oh, the but basic, I know exactly what I can't saying. explain how yeah. fucking incredible it is. Yeah, there's, it's, it's, there's it's a insane. video on YouTube of Iguazu Falls and high flood, and it's mm. not the best quality, but it is so amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. just like that's fuck, those yeah. water bridges. The oh, water's going over the top of them. Really, it puts and it into it, perspective. You just yeah, like, it's so ins- insignificant. <laughs> that you know to see a big mega flood in in progress again, it's an unstoppable force. Mm. You should watch this. Um, you should watch this. Um, the, the latest podcast by Joe Rogan. He has a YouTube video of it. And it's by, again, he had he interviewed um, Graham Hancock, this guy here, and Randall Carlson. Yeah. And they talk about um, Graham Hancock, Randall Carlson, and a lot of um, scientific that, um, people. They, they believe that... Uh, they believe that... That fuck. twelve thousand years ago, What's when that? that that's the Iguazu Falls flood there. Oh, that's sick! Look oh, at that! Fuck. I haven't seen that. That's that is crazy. insane, isn't that? that June 9, two thousand fourteen. Oh no, that's better that. than what I've seen. And does, but, it, does it do that every year? I'm not sure, but it so, looks pretty intense. Fucking Jesus! Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll put that. Hey, Tommy, oh, okay. that link. We'll put, in put the that show up in the show notes. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. So, Jeff, so, so sorry that, about all that swearing. Yeah. They no, have a. It's they have great. that to me. That that is. No one's listening to me. Yeah. Oh, sure. This is all. Who can do it by himself? Hey, hey, this is what do you think? What do you think? Send us an email. I'll get back to you. Me and Jeff will get some popcorn. Yeah. Um. Fucking hell. Sorry. On this Joe Rogan podcast, they they show these land in North America where there's you know when um, the water washes in the, on the on the shoreline of a beach and it ripples yeah they show these huge expanses of ripples through landscape that are the ripples are like 15 meters high mm. on this landscape all through North America and it converges because they believe they have proof that it was an asteroidal impact that hit the North American ice sheet that caused the end of the ice age which they say because there's all these flood myths around that time 10,000 years ago and they say that they have there's so many people now, but you can't fuck with science. They're so stubborn, all the scientists that's been set in stone. But oh, yeah, they yeah. say that there was thousand foot floods oh. for four oh, or yeah, five yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. And it's carved out all the canyons and the Great Lakes and everything like that because of yes. this asteroidal impact that because you look at the ice age, it snapped it snapped mm. out of it in a yeah. in a in, yeah, a, in a week. Something had to stop it. And they yeah. can't they can't explain it. And they believe that they've got proof and evidence yeah. that there was floods that were a thousand foot high that and carved these valleys, and they show they show you'd love this. I'll mm. send you the link to it. I was I've watched three quarters of it because it's still I'm watching it on YouTube, and it's a four hour podcast. But it's the most interesting shit you've ever mm. fucking thought about. And no one is no one has actually science hasn't one hundred percent gotten behind it yet because you have to be, you have to beat down all the old scientists yeah. that believe that their theories or everything that they've worked for their life is proven to be wrong, you know? But there's all this evidence now that that's what ended the Ice Age. That's what... Um, it's so so uh, so um, instantly, and it's all there to see, and it's on this podcast. I'll send it to you. You would get a real kick out of it. But imagine that, thousand-foot floods right, it, right into um, the country. That's I, why there's the, no megafauna in North America It's the America sort of thing well. I dream yeah. about. It's a thousand-foot flood. Yeah. Well, that, in, in um, Magicians of the Gods, he was talking about that sort of stuff yeah, as well yeah. and saying that like there was a guy um, in the early 20th century that figured this out and went out to all these places in North America and go, holy fuck, you know, like this... There was just like one massive flood that happened mm. for like two or three weeks. And then he could just never, everyone hated it. Yeah. That's the only thing about science is it's like when someone has a theory, I mean, the whole idea about science is to like look at the evidence. And if the evidence is overwhelming, then they pertain to that idea. But one, one, when one scientist has his own theory, it's like, that's it. You know, I'm yeah, so they passionate about it. it. They hang on to it. It's people have like, been teaching it for, they've been, they've been teaching this theory for 50 years. Yeah. And you come along and go, hey, everything you've taught in your, in your whole career is wrong. Yeah, that's right. Not everything, but you know. They like, should that's be more why. open to it though. I mean, mm. that, that's what science is, you know. Mm. Anyway, yeah. that is amazing. Yeah. But, for sure. Um, 
Yeah. So, so what's the next? Um, what's the next expedition? Then, Jeff, what do you got on the on the horizon in the way of these volcano well, we, expeditions? We've got a new. We've got a confirmed expedition going back up there the fifteenth of February for at least a month. Mm-hmm. And if we keep getting people wanting to come along, we'll stay up there mm. for as long as need be. Mm. Yep. So you guys need to come along. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that'd be sweet. Yeah, and join us. Really, really keen so, to yeah. do it. We're trying to hook it up that last one, obviously. But yeah. So I mean, we'll we'll be up there at least the fifteenth of March mm. if that's um. Able to be mm. slotted in. Yeah, we'll, mm. we'll, we'll definitely definitely look at it because it's the. Uh, I can imagine it would be the pinnacle. Amazing. I don't know what I would do after it. No, nah, it, I don't know what I'd do for the rest of my life. I'd become a drug. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. I have to become yeah. a heroin addict. Well, you could. Uh, <laughs> I'm so much of a drug. You know, heroin and lava. To, yeah, yeah. Be, lava. You'd be comfortably numb <laughs> yeah, yeah, on, the, on the edge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what about you? Were saying, um, but you were saying also. Um, the Congo, we're going to let you before the show. Yeah, you were saying the, the Congo, the, we're going to let you in, the, and you were going to the, do some the, volcanic. The Congo, studies. we've we've been done an ascent to the bottom. I mean, other people have done that too, but mm-hmm. we we're looking at taking tourists there, and we've been told that we will be allowed to do that, even though it's in a national park, as long as we don't wreck things, yeah. and mm-hmm. as long as everyone benefits from it, mm-hmm. um, and as long as we help the local volcano observatory, which doesn't have much money to place and monitor the instruments inside the volcano which we're more than happy to do Mm. because it protects a town of about a million people right Mm, underneath the volcano so as long as we're putting something back into it because there's so many customers from Europe that would come you know Congo is quite a dangerous country the volcano Nyira Gongo is Mm -hmm. a 12,000 foot very brutal climb and yet there were 50 people a day going up there you'd be lucky to get 50 people a year going up Ambram and most people don't even know Unless you're from Australia or New Zealand, Vanuatu doesn't exist. Yeah. So we need to get it more on the people's um, you know, radar. radar. But we also need to start developing the Congo and take ourselves to where the customers are already going mm-hmm. and offer them to not just stand on the top but go right inside mm. yeah. and even sleep inside. So, so that's going to be the next thing, sleep inside. the Sleeping inside the... Yeah, yeah. We've done <laughs> Do it. you ever yeah. want to get to the... the Dr. Evil sort of stage where you got like a, a place a, a inside, volcano, inside yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and do you want no. like a little mini me do a little <laughs> no, mini I chef think what I really want to do is put a giant gas cylinder in <laughs> purely for safety you know so it's a safety video wait how do you make, uh, just push one that's in. what I'm thinking push one in oh yeah that'd be, we're not oh. quite sure how to get one in there yet maybe a giant, giant tribute chain. what are you talking about Put a gas in like if you put, put a, a gas cylinder in a lava lake yeah, just yeah, to see yeah. what happens. Because <laughs> well, it's something you need to know. Idea. We need to know what happens. How about it might you cause the very, end of the world. You sound like a, you sound like a real pyromaniac right now, like Jeff. Like yeah. How about you just have a very very calm, dense meal and have a toot in there. Yeah. <laughs> see what goes on. Hold it. Yeah. Um, no. So do you do much work with like um, volcanologists? Or we to, we to do get... sometimes. We sometimes take them in there, but volcanologists are kind of this whole separate lot of people who don't approve often of what we do and we take excessive right. risks and we do these things. But if you're a volcanologist, you should get out of your office, climb inside a volcano and actually see the mechanics of what you're, so that's a fair you're point. studying. Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. But a lot of the time now, again, because of all these safety rules, you can't go into the field and do what? Oh, it's mm. You know what I mean? It's killing everything. Yeah. yeah. So what about um what about when you are in the the belly of the volcano? How hot is it in there? Like what's what are the, what type of protective hot. suits you wearing? Space suits? Well, or what are you doing? Hot is a a a, 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 a relative, hot doesn't do the justice. No, hot is um it's a bit like a torch light. Mm. Unless you're standing right on the very edge of the 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 pit that's got the lava in it, you don't feel anything. It's the radiant heat is all going straight mm. up. But the moment you can see that lava and the radiant heat can hit you, it's like you're being hit by a wall of you know, it's like you're you're looking at the surface of the sun. Mm. Um, it is so hot, you can last four to six seconds without protective gear. How close? You, oh, like well, on the rim. You thir- of the, of the, of when you're meters. thirty meters away from <laughs> the lava, oh, God. You, you know what happens? You just fry and dust. Too, too hot, too hot to stand there. You will be running yeah. away. But with a protective suit on, the heat shield. And uh, breathing apparatus, you can stand on the edge until that air runs out in the breathing tank. Yeah, well, no, I, I've stood on the edge for forty minutes before, and you do, know, do you, dumb question, but do you feel that? Yes, you can sense it. Yeah, I would say it's the same as like being in an astronaut suit. You know that the um, that the conditions outside will kill you straight away, mm. and your gear, you feel it's kind of the ultimate feeling of feeling like Superman. Because you've got this mm. awesome power right in front of you, you can sense and feel, and you know that it's hot as hell. Because even though your suit is reflecting all of that energy, mm. you can still feel a sense of extreme heat all around you. Mm. And 
it's a magic feeling. It's like it's, it's yeah. There's, there's you've got to come and do it. Oh, I'm, I'm there. I'm what there. about um? What about the suits? Like, where do you get the suits produced and made? Uh, well, I have the suits NASA? made. Dimmies. No, <laughs> no, not NASA. We use the same material that NASA use. Yeah. Um, it's a company called Gentex in America make this um, aluminized Nomex, I think it's called. And mm. um, a, a friend of mine who's the fire chief in a small town in Christchurch. He, his wife, uh, whips up these heat suits uh, uh, on a sewing machine. <laughs> and, uh, that? So, yeah, sort of a homemade heat suit. Yeah. You can buy them commercially, but they're incredibly expensive. Huh? And how well, much are we talking? Jeff, we've got to... Uh, oh, you're, I, not doing, you're not doing... You're not selling it. Do you want to cut this bit out, mate? Yeah, <laughs> no, no. Right. I, I mean, no, I can get... You know, he'll make them for about 2000 New Zealand dollars. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. New Zealand really dollars. Good exchange rate. It's about 20 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, our exchange rate is very, <laughs> very similar <laughs> to yours at the moment. Yeah, Thank I you know. very much. <laughs> oh, that's great. So how long does it take to get into one of these things? A heat suit. Yeah. Not long. Not too long. So it's not like an astronaut who had to take... No not, no, not like an astronaut. You just no. got to make sure you're, uh, you know, it's a breathing apparatus, the same as the fire brigade yeah. use. And it's actually where we got them from. The the company that services all the equipment for the fire brigade got us some used ones and refurbished them and gave them to us. Right. And, um, yes, yeah, so as long as you know what you're doing, you put your breathing apparatus on and everything properly, but you, well, you know if it's not working because yeah, you, you're you not feeling. breathing anything. So have you so. ever gone up to the rim without a, spa- without a suit on? And done the done the uh, four to six second test. Oh, yeah, we all do that. As soon as we get down there, you want to see, so you run up, yeah, have a quick look over. Fuck, that's hot. Come back, you put on your space suit. But everyone and then wants you go down. No, so you don't like- go down any further. You go down four hundred meters mm-hmm. across the floor, mm-hmm. and then the lava lake pit is in the bottom of that floor. Mm. So you got like a little landing landing down there, thirty meters from the from the pit. Oh, there's a big, quite a vast expanse. It's about. And you're fl- saying it's like, it's it's okay if you're like over. Away from the direct line of heat. If you're away from you the direct line of heat, put your head over. As and you're, you're coming down the cooked. last part of the cliff, you're still like 200 meters away from it. You can still feel a fair bit of heat. Oh yeah. But you've got to have a clear line of sight. It's like a torchlight. Yeah, the gotcha. Radiant heat doesn't go around corners. No. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. So my um my biggest worry by looking over space uh, sp- I keep calling it space suit a suit or no suit would be that some volcanic lava just goes. Gets me right in the face. Yeah, but that doesn't seem to happen. Yeah. Um, I know it sounds strange, but the lava lake is a relatively safe thing to approach because it's um, the pressure, the energy, everything's being given off in a, a controlled uh, a manner, and it's it's dissipating its its pressure. Um, mm. That's what it is, I guess. It's like a valve on a pressure cooker, which is the Earth. Yep. Which you know, without it, the Earth might explode. Mm. But I don't know. But the lava lake seems to stay within relatively the same level within a few metres inside its pit. It doesn't ever really blow over. The, it doesn't b- blast over the top mm. without warning. It's bizarre. It's stayed the same for... Because you can tell, because it's all ash and, and dust around the the area you approach the lava lake, you can immediately tell if fresh debris has landed yeah. on that dust, just like Mount Yasur. Yeah, you yeah, can tell sh- yeah. immediately fresh material, and we've never seen that. Yeah, really? Other than, you know, tiny little bits. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Do, so, do, do, um, is it regularly tested like the volcano? You know how some volcanoes, there's um, like in the town, they'll have um, volcano warnings because they know the status of the volcano. Is it like that? Well, it's, it's not like that. Well, they do have it. Yeah, Sue has warning levels too, where at a certain level you're not supposed to come up there, but fucking it doesn't stop anyone from mm. the locals to take you up there, whether it's level five. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there seems to be a constant alert level on Mount Mar- Mar- on Marum, but we always stay right on the top, right on the edge of it. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> it's so good, isn't it? It sounds like it's, it's um, so definitely far beyond what like I've experienced. The, the adventure of a, f- <laughs> of a lifetime. Lifetime. Yeah. yeah. The thing is that I've become quite blasé about it, so it's quite hard for me to try and explain. Well, you, but because yeah. I hope I have, because camping on top of a, an active volcano and and being kept awake at night because of the glow on your tent <laughs> is an unreal experience. It's one that actually scares some people just being up there. Mm. But to me, it's a peaceful thing. It's not. Um, I've been up there so many times and climbed down inside so many times that climbing off the edge of a 400 metre cliff has become just a, an everyday occurrence to me. But mm. it, it should be terrifying. Yeah. Um, so, what about um, so natural disasters is, is definitely your thing for sure. Uh, have you ever 
done photography apart from the Walton areas of, of uh, sort of man-made situations and, and, and things like that? Um, yeah, um, I, I like to film man-made fuck-ups, is yep. the way I put it. That's what I was going to uh, say, uh, but I didn't want to sound too professional. Yeah, um, <laughs> places where the human race has wrecked things, like yeah. the, the Aral Sea where there's, in Kazakhstan, where there's no sea left and mm-hmm. there's all these ships in the desert with camels walking past right. because the sea has disappeared. And, you know, you've got the wharf and all the ships tied up and there's no water there and mm. stuff like that. And the, um, the mud volcano disaster in Indonesia where they drilled into some mud and an entire town was buried in mud. <sighs> um, and another thing I like is abandoned... There's, all over the world there are abandoned towns and cities where yeah. humans have set Chernobyl. up... Yeah, uh, not yeah, not just Chernobyl. There's um, there's one called Pyramidion on the Arctic Circle, which uh, w- north, way up north of Norway, where they Russians went in there and built this city to mine something, and it mm. became too difficult, and they just walked away. <sighs> so there's uh, you know there's Ghost trucks and- trucks on the wharf, uh, c- cranes, cars in the street, yeah, and that kind of thing. I love that. It kind of looks like post apocalyptic. Oh life. yeah, for sure. Uh, I love abandonment of a human endeavour that's insane um, and a remote place where there's no one mm. um, and that that kind of thing I like too mm. so mm. that'd be really nice that'd be amazing wouldn't it what about um, what do you think about those um, Amazonian tribes that have you know never experienced the yeah. modern world oh, or, yeah I know. bet there are people like that out there and there's yeah. probably cannibals around too but oh for sure yeah the young guy Chris Horsley that's uh, my, my main climber now on the volcano trips he's done quite a bit of that where he'll just go and wander into a tr- remote tribe in Papua New Guinea and stay with them for six months and stuff and, and get malaria 30 times. Yeah, that and, uh, <laughs> 30 times. Uh, and, you know, go back to just having nothing except what you're wearing, and um, he, he likes that sort of thing. Um, personally, there's no Starbucks there, so <laughs> yeah, that's that's don't worry. You can't get your surfboard no, but, or your marijuana. But, you know, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's probably a lot of marijuana in Papua New Guinea. It's probably but Chris illegal. will tell you more, more about that probably. Yeah. Um, you know, I frown upon it because it's illegal. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Of course you do. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a bad thing. Yeah, no, you shouldn't do yeah. it if it's illegal. Yeah, yeah. Very dangerous. I was um, I was reading an article um, about anecdotal evidence to suggest six foot or five foot um, sized tarantulas in, 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 oh, in the Amazon. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah, but basically, you, the, these guys, these reporters went around to sort of local tribes in there and they they started to get very subs- uh, suspicious of the fact that they were building their huts, so where they were living their houses. In the air? All, all quite high off the ground. Mm, tarantulas. And they, and they were saying, and you know, they... they a um, five foot tra- a tarantula. How's that? And well, there has been... Five foot Five yeah, well, foot in, in, in diameter. I'm not a fan yeah. of spiders yeah. and that... Actually, it sounds like arachnophobia. Hell, oh, for sure. It sounds me. like yeah. Starship Troopers or something. It's yeah, like, it sounds, it's, it's it sounds like a sci fi movie. Horrendous. Yeah. But as I'd always say, show me a photo of one of these things. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. And yeah. like, there's and been, there's have been, you been, seen one? Couldn't there be like jaguars and other things that they keep yeah, off the ground for? But they were saying, like, the, they were um, interviewing I'd, the people I'd and they were to saying. keep out of the place altogether. <laughs> yeah. There are, the, the, you know, you've got bugs, snakes, all kinds of shit. It's like Australia. Yeah. It's completely filled with deadly animals and insects. They want to kill you. Why does a spider this big need neuro? Toxin yeah. enough to kill six elephants because yeah. they're going to eat six elephants. Yeah. What does it need that shit for? <laughs> it, should be, it should be completely illegal. Oh, it should be definitely illegal. We should yeah. sue what are you all doing in here, Red Spiders? Yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, cops. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, bring it like, to uh, you know. SWAT team. Yeah. <laughs> just, you know, I'm just here yeah, to kill you, basically. <laughs> they're yeah. probably on their way now. We're not allowed to talk about yeah, that because right, right, yeah. they'll think you're using it if you're talking about it. Seriously, I mean, this is dangerous. There's some pretty cool animals out there, though. Like, I love the idea of like snakes can like. Yeah, that's cool animals. Like snakes, snakes can like dislocate their jaw to like eat insane amounts of like like eat pigs and shit. Eat a giant pig. Yeah, or did a you see that? Um, did you see that uh, thing that Joe Rogan put on his Instagram the other day of a snake that was um, eating a lizard? Oh yeah, that, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The lizard golfed it, it back up. It, no, yeah, the snake was eating the lizard, and the but lizard the, chomped down on the snake yeah. and hung on, and the snake was like engulfing it till its head, and then yeah. it couldn't engulf the whole thing. It's like fucking let go, I want to eat you. Yeah. The other thing's like I'm not letting go, and then so it let go. It was that persistent that the snake finally let go and spewed it back out and was Got like, back "Fuck out. you!" How's that? That is insane, isn't it? Yeah, oh, that's so sick. cool. Um, should we go to six from six, Tommy? Yeah, sure thing. Cool. Yeah, Jeff, we got six questions for you. Three yep. for me, three from Tommy. Yeah, ready? Yep. He's ready. Alrighty. I normally ask you, you're a well-travelled man, but I know that you are. So I'll you've, you've been to a few places. Skip hey. that. So, what's your favourite destination on the planet that you've been? Um, Marum Volcano and Amber Island, lava lakes. All right, yeah. that's a, that's an easy one. What about it? What's your second favourite? Uh, 
I don't know, the Autobahn in Germany. 200 oh, yeah. k's an hour. Shh, no. Um, that would be cool. It's probably though. illegal too. Um, <laughs> no, I just... Uh, I like South America. Same, it's my favourite part of the place. I love South part America. I love railways. There's some really decrepit high altitude railways in South America. Mm-hmm. I also love llamas. Mm. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> For some reason, I love llamas. Real they crazy just, looking face right now. Yeah, yeah. No, I like, still haven't yeah. <laughs> Do you? Uh, I, knew, I, love I know we're from <laughs> Pants. <laughs> Pants. Those llama pants are freaking me out. I know that we're from New Zealand, but no, not yeah, in that way. Yeah, but, that's llamas. Like llamas <laughs> are just really cool animals. Yeah, they are. They're, they're and, awesome. And they only spit at you if they don't like you. So you'd watch the Emperor's New Group as a bit of porn. <laughs> well, yeah. Same, um, I did the same thing. Yeah, South America. So, uh, what's your second question? Is what's your dream destination? Top your bucket list that you haven't been to? Uh, probably to ride the Ferro Carroll Central Andino Railway through the highest mountains, Peru. Oh wow! In the really? cab of a locomotive. Really? Is, um, that yeah. is cool. What was um, it? Say that again, just so we get that clear. The Ferro Carol Central Andino is the um, the Ferro railway Central. to the clouds oh. um, in Peru, mm. highest railway in the world. It goes over five thousand meters over the Andes. Really? Um, <gasps> that's actually my bucket list to be able to do that in in the locomotive cab ride across that railway. Huh. Um, you know, wow. be llamas running along commercial beside railway. the train. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a commercial yeah. railway. I've never um, heard of that before. Yeah, no, we'll look it up. Is that the you know, if you think the the South Island, you know, railway through the Alps and stuff is amazing, or the Canadian Rockies, this is just like those on steroids. Mm. You just got the biggest mountains in the world, mm. just in this tiny railway going through ridiculously high altitudes, and just you know, you, and you do you have herds of llamas running everywhere, high mountains. It's just visual symphony of amazing images. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Just, cool. To, to me, that that would be the bucket list. Just um, to go one. cruising. Yeah. So that's the plan. Awesome. Awesome. Film the shit out of it with a drone. Yep. Yeah, just yeah. make it look as amazing as as it really as is. As it is, yeah. Mm, you yeah. wouldn't need to filter that much at all, would you? <laughs> no, it's mm. pretty much it. Yeah, that's awesome. Safe. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, pretty South safe. South American, South American, South American, safe. South American, safe. Well, again, no, dangerous as fuck. Yeah, yeah. safety rules at home, and if you want to ride on the roof of a freight train, they'll let you. Yeah, that's Whereas true. here, you're going to jail. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. For your own safety. Mm. Mm. Ridiculous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my final question for me, Jeff, is do you have any books that you are really fond of that you would recommend to people? They can be like a biography, they can be a comic book, they can be a self-help book. Not really. I'm not really a book fanatic, but, you know, some of the some of the Peter Arnett books, the stories of, of CNN and the pioneering days of the, the war, war in Iraq and that, mm. you know, I read that stuff and I just, yeah, I've done that, mm. some of that shit and it's... it's you know, pretty amazing. the stuff they did, and so, apart from some of their fake live broadcasts. Um, oh, really? <laughs> but, yeah, 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 right. Big girl yeah. style. Big, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but no, I mean, yeah, stuff from reporters uh, uh, who've who've gone and done amazing things, and and you know, a lot of the media is just a potato factory of bullshit these days. But there are reporters out there risking their lives and going into dangerous places and exposing the bad shit that's going on that shouldn't be like Syria and that while well, the rest of the world's ignoring it. Um, so th- there is a, is a place for journalists t- taking risks and going and doing things mm. at that, um, you know, John Pilger, people like that, people, people who actually go out to find out the truth and tell it rather than just... Read bullshit from an auto queue. Do you get into mm. Vice documentaries? I love Vice. Yeah, I Vice thought, yeah, I thought you love them. Absolutely, I absolutely love Vice. Yeah, because they're not afraid to go into the whorehouse in the Congo. Yeah. and do an interview. Yeah, and, yeah. and that was the funniest one I ever saw. They got into a car chase somewhere in North Korea, mm. where they're in a forest, and they were shooting back mm. at the car that was chasing them in the snow-covered forest. And I think, well, unless someone's shooting at you, you're not answering asking the right questions. That's right. And I'm an absolute huge fan of Vice. Mm. They actually recently did it. Story on us on the volcano. It hasn't released yet, but oh, right, okay. really? um, yeah, they were up there a month Sick. ago. I awesome. can't tell you what the great. other thing they were doing, but so, so and another major customer was up there with us, and you'll see soon the results of that. Is yeah, pretty incredible, well, I'm sure they want to get in touch with the major customer would be. Ah, uh, you can't mention that major customer. No good. Yeah. Would it start? Would it? Would it rhyme with a? <laughs> no, it wouldn't. <laughs> you can't say that. It wouldn't rhyme with anything. <laughs> All right. It'd rhyme All with right. me getting into trouble. Oh, All right. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I reckon I know who it would be. Yeah, no. It's, uh, um, yeah. Would you do any work with them in the future? What's that? Would you do any work with them in the future? Or? Vice. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. kept in touch with their camera crew. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because a lot of the stuff they do, um, I, I would be right into that. Mm. They're doing all the things that, you know, 
generally they're always being arrested, chased out of somewhere. Oh, getting sure. uh, unless you are being arrested, um, chased out of somewhere, or shot having at. guns pulled on you, or being shot at, you're not asking the right questions. Mm. And I don't see any of this mainstream media bullshit. Mm. Um, they're not being shot at or being getting in a car chase. Yeah, and. That's why I think Vice TV is 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 emerging as one of my favourite outlets because they don't have any reason to tell bullshit. Yeah. Um, it is what it is. You can't fake what they're doing. No, exactly and right. Yeah. pretty much everything else you see is fake. Well, that's right. Like the first one I ever saw was, um, I think it was called Social Cleansing Sewers of Bogota, and it was about how basically in Bogota, the, the police and the government, I don't want to like you know say, I mean, this is from what I remember, but... Uh, they were going around and basically shooting and killing off homeless people. So the homeless people, as a, as a, as a social cleanse, and the, the homeless people had no choice but to go and live in the sewers where they were at pure Is risk. This I mean, they Ro- were- well, Romania, you got this whole yeah, community of drug addicts and homeless people living in the sewers. Yeah, it's like this whole city. Yeah, of homeless. That's the sort of thing I want to. I want to go and you do things that, that are so confronting that oh, that's you right. know that we don't see the dark side of life that we don't want to know about yeah but i bet there's people living in the sewers even here exactly um yeah. and 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 they shouldn't need to be no that's right and look there's another one on vice um don't i'm not going to tell them because i probably watched about 50 of them but uh, <laughs> they're just great and they're they're i mean vice went into the war-torn part of syria and went around with the with isis and just you know oh, was speaking it's like it's insane and like you, you they they were they were uh the biggest part of that that stood out for me was uh, they were interviewing really young kids, like eight, seven, you know, yeah. really, really young kids. And these kids were saying like, I hate, you know, or the, the translation of I hate Americans or infidels. I can't wait to go to, to, to heaven and, you know, have laid with virgins and what, what, whatever they were saying. It's just like. The brainwashing that's going on over there. I like it's I like yeah, like it's pretty that like, generally honestly, comes before a truck bomb attack. Oh, yeah, exactly yeah. right. Yeah, and they're using just, drones now. They're so awesome. ISIS is. Yeah, <sighs> the truck bomb attacks all form of drones. Oh, man. I mean, who's actually choreographing this amazing photography and to get that stuff edited, mm. music, everything, mm. and out on a sat phone in a war torn country mm. where the US could. And immediately block that sat phone. Mm. There's got to be some other bigger interest involved well, there in allowing all that shit to get seen because right. they could block that in a heartbeat. Absolutely. You, they easily could. That, I mean, a lot of people are asking those sort of questions about ISIS I mean, in terms of where the funding's coming from. I mean, these yeah. people are rocking around with very nice well, cars. Yeah, and, and the, you, know, you see a convoy nice of $10 million worth of Land Cruisers. Yeah. Couldn't, someone, couldn't someone just go to Toyota and say, don't you sell them the Land Cruisers? Yeah. Because they can't walk to do their tax. Exactly. You know yeah. what I mean? There's a lot at stake there's a lot going on that we the truth is not oh, yeah. I don't believe most of what I'm hearing yeah but whatever it is it's sinister yeah and it, it's involved in profit Jeff we'll, we'll have to get you back on the show for a uh, conspiracy chat we'll uh, we'll be here for 10 hours it'll be we good would fun. because I've got a theory on lots of things yeah so. no, that'd be fantastic we'll do it for sure <laughs> hey uh, what um, let's let's go to, to my three now what do you like to do when you have some downtime or spare time uh, Apart from watching Vice documentaries <laughs> and Llama documentaries. Ex- did you see the document, the Llama, no. The- <laughs> <laughs> did you see the Vice uh, story on the donkey thing in Colombia? No, let's just move. <laughs> <laughs> I probably did, mate. We'll yeah, talk yeah. about that. Look it up later. Um, yeah, I will. What do I like to do? I just like to put on a pack and go bush. Yep. And, um, yeah. Beautiful. Try and stay as fit as I can. And, yep. um, yeah, my idea of um, relaxing is picking a day with the worst weather and torrential rain Put a pack on, put the Walkman on, and go bush and um, still rocking the old and, Walkman, Jeff. Yeah, yeah not, Walkman. well, not a Walkman, um, <laughs> iPod. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Just Shut get on your horse. Get on your horse and cart. <laughs> <months. laughs> One of those yellow fucking things, you know, yeah. that you put Make on. Make sure you stay connected with Morse code. And- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Uh, so, that's classic. Um, so yeah, that's cool. what I, I like to do. Yeah, get go out in nature. Yeah, yeah. It's what good. about uh, some role models, mate? Biggest role models growing up? Ah, oh, it's got to be Sir Edmund Hillary. Yep. He knocked the bastard off. Yep. Did he well, climbed didn't he? Mount Everest. He did that. <laughs> did well, a, didn't he? He did well. He, he did that with no other reason than because it's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people ask me these bullshit questions about why do you climb the side of a volcano? You don't need to. Mm. Well, because it's there. Mm. Should because, do it. Because I want to do something and I want to stand somewhere that no one else has, has stood. 
and, and I want to keep doing that kind of thing mm. because you, you know you can't do that forever and eventually you're going to get too fucking old to do it mm. and it's too fucking late once you're sitting there staring at the old people's you know oh, ceiling yeah. the old people's home thinking fuck I wish I'd done that I know I don't um, fear that and there's too many yeah that is the only, actually, actually the only thing I fear mm. yep um Oh, shock. It's uh, very similar, very similarly minded to a guy we interviewed, I uh, don't know, like four months ago, probably. Gerardo. Jeff? No, no. Um, Bill Stone. Oh, yeah, Stone. Bill Stone, he's actually got a, he owns an aerospace company called Stone Aerospace, and he's trying to um, uh, mine the, uh, sorry, bore through the um, ice in Europa to try and find life, and he wants to set mm. up a, um, a, a station on Mars to uh, mine, mine it's like, it's like not a, Mars moon, the moon yeah the moon mine it's like a moon. petrol station to. but he started off uh, or what he does also is he's a um, he's a caver and he's been to some of the deepest parts of the world and he said he said the same exact I reckon mm. nearly the same exact words you just said he said uh, I want to do it because I want to go somewhere where nobody's gone before mm. and we're running out of space unless you, you go into that. space exactly you, you, you're That's running exactly out of options right. you know yeah. you just you're basically trying to push human Evolution, not evolution, but discovery, because create history. Yeah, 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 just but just just push the boundaries of what's capable of where we can go, and and yep. I don't know why there's an an an, an innate want to do that. Well, in human the, curiosity is that's fundamental the human to who curiosity we are. that we've had since the caveman that's days right. to want to explore, to yep. be able to go and do to to travel to do things that no one else has done. And, that's and absolutely I, right. You know, I've managed yeah, to awesome. do that for a whole lifetime. So yeah. Far. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. And now I've, I've got to stage where I want to be able to take some, take other people who don't necessarily have the skills or the knowledge to do mm. that, because it's within the bounds of almost everyone to do mm. something volcano related. Yeah. Um, take me under your wing, my friend. We'll do yeah. it. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Hey, uh, finally, if you could invite, I'm really excited about this. If you could invite three people, dead or alive, to dinner, who would they be and why? Oh. Three amazing people that you'd love to. Oh, well, shit. I mean, obviously, it'd be Sir, Sir Edmund Hillary. Yep. Um, not sure who else. I haven't really given it much thought. Uh, it is a tough one. I, I don't know. Sir Winston, uh, not Sir, uh, Winston Churchill. Yep. You know, good. He, he, he kept the Brits morale up against mm. Hitler's bullshit. Um, you know. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I think those who've stood against... Tyrants, um, you know, Pretty Churchill amazing. would be one. Not sure who else. Rihanna? <laughs> she stood against the real tyrant. She stood the tyrant. Like Chris Brown? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, she stood uh, up she's managed him. to... Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Um, Elton John? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Elton John, Winston Churchill and Sarah. Imagine that. That'd be great. Bit of background music. <laughs> or, or Tina Turner. I don't yeah, know. That's don't right, show yeah. my age now. Oh, that's good. Beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Well, uh, where can people find out more about you and more about your expeditions, Jeff? Well, you can go to www.ultimatevolcanoexpeditions.com, all one word. Uh, you can go to us on Facebook, same thing, uh, Ultimate Volcano Expeditions. And uh, you can like us there, and um, you can yep, you can email us, email us through the website. We're constantly mm-hmm. um, improving it and, and, and stuff. Um, there we can send you a spreadsheet of... Um, Exactly. Well, I think I've sent you, you one too, mm-hmm. if you have anyone who's interested, where you can um, contact us. We can give you various options. You know, going to the bottom of a 400-metre cliff to the edge of a lava lake is not for everyone. Mm-hmm. We've got another option, which we call the 100-metre cliff, where we can take you 100 metres down a gentle slope to the edge of the big cliff, where you're lined up perfectly with the lava lake, and we can get you your bucket list photo mm-hmm. with... One uh, percent of the risk of going to the bottom, mm. and about ninety-five percent as it looks as good as going all the way to the bottom. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. So um, just because of the camera angle, you got someone at the top, yep. person hundred meters down, it lines up directly with the lava lake. Yeah, the, the image you get that that's the image there from the hundred. Oh, right, oh, that's, that's cool. That's the that's... image there from the hundred meter cliff. That's the hundred meter cliff. That's a hundred meters down, and the lava is still so three hundred below you. He's not really? wearing. A... No, he's not because you're three hundred meters oh, okay. away from the lava. Is that where the guy took the phone call? Yes, did that's that, that's that's exactly where we did the phone call. Yeah, can I have a look at that, Tommy? Do you know what's really interesting is that a couple of days ago that ad actually came up on YouTube, and I was like, "We're interviewing," you know, like yeah, it's because it's because of um, it's because of fucking their algorithms on the internet. Yeah, because you would have searched Jeff Mackley to oh, do the right. song, right? Well, I was doing Fuck, Jeff Mackley, and I was obviously doing a bit of reading up on yeah. you, and then it just yeah, goes straight to the yeah. ad. They're good. Zuckerberg's all over it, mate. Yeah, he knows me. Yeah. He knows who I am. Poor bastard. Um. 
Yeah, all it's right. Great so, shots here. So, so, I mean, certainly in, in February or March, if you want to come up there and you don't have much fucking money, we could at least get you to that bit for fuck all, if nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then you can decide what you want to do from there. Mm-hmm. Or, or, you know, if we get a ton of fucking jobs through this, we'll see what we can do. We'll yeah. cer- certainly. So there you go, um, listeners. Yeah. Uh, get, on, on. get on board, and man, Tommy, we'll, uh, we'll go over there and join you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, please get around us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, get, a, get enough people together and we could... Launch a, launch a trip yeah cool you, if you find six or eight people we could launch a trip just based on that exactly when you want to do it mm. so if you think you can find ten mates mm. we could launch a trip that's yeah, another, we'll, another we'll, food uh, yeah. we'll yeah. definitely uh, definitely try and do that for sure so well that's it Jeff thanks for coming on the show yeah pleasure no worries alrighty that's a wrap alrighty guys if you enjoy the show make sure you subscribe head to uh, head into your little iTunes button there Hit subscribe. That means you'll get all of our shows coming up. If you're already a subscriber, then please do the next best thing, which is rate and review our show. So if you subscribe, guys, and if you rate and review, it just helps us grow, helps us get to that next level. The more downloads we get, the more subscribers we get, the more people you tell, then the more basically financially viable it is for us to keep doing this forever and ever and bring you more, um, more of the finest shows from the interesting people that we get. We can provide video content. We can provide uh, lots of cool bells and whistles that we can't provide right now. So get behind us and, uh, and subscribe and leave us a rating and review. All the show notes will be at www.adventuretravel.com forward slash radio. And don't forget to check out our sponsors, True Pride, www.truepride.com.au forward slash ADVF. Get your joining fee waived if you book a call through our link. Carve, www.carve.ph forward slash ADVF. Get 10 hours free, upscale your business, get some time back in your life. And don't forget, guys, to check out www.ultimatevolcanoexpeditions.com. Use the code word radio and you'll get 10% off any of Jeff's upcoming expeditions to Vanuatu and into Africa. And Adventure Fit Travel, www.adventurefittravel.com. Use the code word radio and get 10% off any and all trips. Join our mailing list. Get all the updates from our blog, podcast, and the trips. See you next week. Discovery Roger, go for deploy.